Hello everyone, welcome to what if Luffy died fighting a Kanu and went to high school DXD part 3. Before we start please go support Javier Ramirez 042 for writing that awesome fanfic, now let's begin. This is the translated version I made. There will be some wrong he or she calling here because it's translated so let me clear this Luffy is a male in this story. Chapter 17. The governor reveals himself. It was a new day in the Haidu mansion, and at this moment, our protagonist was in the bathroom surrounded by all the beauties of the new harem, totally naked to him. Ara, your skin is very beautiful, Nami. How did you do it? Rhea said looking at the orange-haired girl with a smile. Well, I take extreme care of my skin and my beauty. Many think it's because I'm very vain, but actually it's because I want to be a queen worthy of Luffy. Maybe she couldn't be in power, but she could be in intelligence and beauty. Nami said proudly. Gifufu, I'm sure he'll be pleased, Rhea's told him with a smile. So you lost your mother too? Akeno asked Robin. That's how it is. She was an archaeologist and because she was researching about the empty century, they ended up killing her when she was a child. I just wanted her to hug me like a mother and for her to call me daughter. In the end, I was able to receive that, but I ended up alone. Robin said sadly. I understand you, I know what it's like to lose a mother because of the opinion of others, Akeno told her, hugging her sadly. Hey, swordswoman. How are you doing with training with Zoro? Yamato asked the brunette while she was showering. I do very well. He has taken me as his apprentice and is teaching me about that power called hockey. I can now cover my durandal with armor hockey to make it stronger. I feel like he is like a brother to me. Zenovia said with emotion. Well, that's good, Yamato said with a smile. While these conversations were taking place, Luffy looked at them all calmly while he admired their naked bodies. Then, two girls leaned on his chest, pressing his huge breasts on top of him, and one said to him, Luffy. Nami and I agreed to have fun with you one night without crossing the line. What are you saying? That's how it is. I proposed it to Ria's and she gladly accepted. Nami said with a smile. Luffy looked at them both with a smile and asked, Do you plan to do this often? They know that I am not like Sanji, and I am not one of those men who are into those things all the time. They both shook their heads strongly at what she asked and Ria's told her, No, love. We just want to give you a wonderful night together, that's all. That's right, Luffy. Don't worry, we will make you so happy that you will forget all worries in your mind. Nami told her, biting her ear with lust. Luffy had his doubts about that, but Nami put her breasts in her face and said, Oh, Luffy. Now that I remember, I promised you that I would cook you some very delicious meat when we were done with Kakabiel's problem. Well, when we get out of here I will cook it for you with a lot of love. Luffy smiled happily and said with excitement, Really? But I didn't beat him. Don't worry. The important thing is that we emerged from that battle unscathed thanks to you, and for that you deserve to be rewarded. I'll also make you delicious meat with love, Rhea said with a big smile. Yeah meat prepared by two beautiful women Luffy shouted excitedly. And while everyone was watching the somewhat funny scene, Luffy only dreamed of a lot of meat offered to him by the two beautiful girls in lustful dresses. When it comes to meat, Luffy does have perverted thoughts. That night, Luffy arrived at a luxurious apartment building and looked at a window with some nerves. I'm here. This weird guy has been calling me constantly and just asking me to play with him. Although I'm not complaining since his payments are very expensive, and with that I receive a lot of money for the house he said with a smile. With that, he entered the building and went to his client's room to knock on the door. After waiting for a while, the door opened showing a middle-aged man with black hair with yellow streaks and a Japanese yukata, looking at him with amusement. Hey, young demon. Sorry about today, he told her in a friendly tone. Luffy smiled kindly at him and entered the room to do his job. After an entertaining game of racing, Luffy told him, Wow, you caught me off guard. Another round. Oh your fighting spirit seems to be increasing. Do you want to do another race, Demon Kun? No, Red Dragon, the man told him with an amused smile. Luffy was shocked when he heard this and upon seeing him, he saw that he had 12 black feathered wings. The Fallen Angel, he said in a state of alert. Correction, the leader of the Fallen Angels. Let me introduce myself, my name is Azazel. A pleasure, Sekiruite, said the now named Azazel with a playful smile. Upon hearing these words, Luffy looked at him with great surprise and knew that he was now in a bind. Don't be scared, boy. I have no intention of harming you, Azazel said, sitting down and pouring himself a glass of wine. Luffy looked at him with a cautious look and asked, And should I trust the leader of the fallen angels when he tricked me by posing as a client to approach him? Azazel looked at him with an amused smile and said calmly, Calm down, if he wanted to hurt you, he would have done it when you didn't know who he was. Sit and drink with me for a while, while I explain my reasons. I'm not a big drinker and I still don't trust you. What do you want from me? Luffy said, sitting in front of him. Azazel smiled and began to explain, you will see. As you already know, I am a fan of research and collections. I am very interested in sacred gears, and yours is a very peculiar one. 
That's why I wanted to attract you so we can get to know each other and I can see your boosted gear better. Luffy felt somewhat harassed by those words, but he let her continue. Also, I called a meeting between the factions to be able to mediate with them a solution to our conflict, and I hope that you will support me in what I am going to propose. I know that you will be very sensible, and you will be able to see in the meeting the benefits of what I will propose. Azazel concluded with a big smile. Luffy could only frown and thought that there was a lot of trouble coming. The next day, at the club, this is unforgivable Rhea shouted with great fury. I agree that bastard must be eliminated said Hancock, also furious. Everyone was in the club after Luffy told them about his encounter with the leader of the Fallen Angels, and the girls did not take it very well. In truth, even knowing that it was decided that the meeting of the leaders of the demons, the angels and the fallen angels will be in this town. And to think that suddenly the governor of the fallen angels would intrude into my territory and interfere with our businesses, Rhea said with pure fury. Luffy sighs. A few days ago, due to the event that occurred in the city between the demons, angels, and fallen angels, the relations between the factions have been affected to a certain extent. As a result, the leaders of each faction will meet and discuss the future. Because of this, everyone in the Gremory group had to attend to report every detail of the incident. Because of this, Azazel made his move to get closer to Luffy, and obviously a certain Reedee didn't take it very well. And if that were not enough, I try to put a hand on my cute Luffy. The price is death I heard that Azazel is extremely interested in sacred gears. Ultimately he contacted us because Luffy has the boosted gear. You're going to be fine, Luffy. I will definitely protect you, said Riaz, stroking Luffy's head lovingly. Luffy could only let her have this moment since he felt like he deserved it. After all, she was like him. A leader who loved her Nakamas above all else, although she had a much more favorite love with him than with the others. It was normal that she would not tolerate her most precious servant and future partner being touched, so he understood her. It seems that Azazel is interested in my sacred gear. I don't want to imagine what he would do if he knows that my Nakamas have and will have similar and even more powerful artifacts. He said with a furious eye. After all, he had to act like Rias regarding his Nakamas and future pieces of him when he became a high-class demon. I heard that Azazel has deep knowledge of sacred gear. I also heard that he is gathering capable holders of sacred gears. But you're going to be fine. Because I'm going to protect you. Kiba said looking at Luffy with a smile. Luffy smiled back at that statement, but Sanji yelled angrily, don't say that it sounds very Akama. Some looked at him in confusion, while the Mujiwaras just cited his behavior. However, he asked me what happened. Furthermore, without knowing his movements, it is also difficult for us to move. On the other side is the ruler of the fallen angels. We can't even come into contact with him. Rhea said meditating. But a voice could be heard in the room that said, Azazel has always been like this, Rhea's. Everyone looked in the direction where the voice came from and saw a handsome crimson-haired man with a silver-haired woman next to him. Luffy's group was surprised to see them when they saw that the Gremory group had kneeled before them and Rhea shouted at the man, Ani-sama, Ani-sama. Luffy's group shouted in pure surprise. Wait so he is your older brother and the demon king Lucifer. Nami shouted in amazement. That's how it is. I couldn't introduce them before because he is very busy with his work. This is Search's Lucifer, my older brother and the Mao Lucifer. And this is Grafia, the head servant of the Gremory family. Rhea said introducing them. I would like her to be my servant Sanji said with hard eyes. Some saw him with a drop of sweat and Search's smiled as he told them. Azazel won't do something like what Kakabiel did a few days ago. Although, maybe I'll make a joke like last time. The governor will come before the agreed date. Please relax. Today I came for private business. At these words, the Gremory group stood up, and the Demon King looked at his little sister with a childish smile as she said, Hey, my little sister. This room looks like a crime scene. He asked me if it is possible that this place is full of magic circles, even if there are young girls gathered here. At this attitude, everyone saw him with a drop of sweat, while Rias looked at him with a gloomy look. Brother, why are you here? She asked in an annoyed voice. Searches only took out a sheet and said, What are you saying? School visits will be very soon. Our father is also excited, so much so that he asked for the day off to come. Also I'm very interested in the Sekiryute boy. Luffy and Searches stared at each other. They both could feel each other's power and had the same opinion that they were monsters. Riaz looked at the silver-haired girl with fury and asked, Brafia, were you the one who told my brother? Brafia only responded with a conflicted look, yeah. The school reports reached me, who has been entrusted with the agenda of the Gremory house. Of course, since I am the queen of Searches Sama, I had to report it to my master. Rhea sighed and some could understand her. No teenage student wants her parents to see them in their classes. Even if my duties as a demon king are difficult, I still have to take a day off. I want to participate in my little sister's school visit. Don't worry. Our father will also come. Searches said with a big smile. 
Bria's ground her teeth and yelled angrily, that is not necessary aren't you the demon king? Quit your job and come here the demon king cannot treat any demon in a special way, no, no. This is also my job. In fact, I'm thinking about holding the meeting between the big three factions in this school. I came to inspect the meeting place, said Searches with a childish smile. This left everyone speechless. Luffy thought it was something that made sense to him after all, almost a lot of faction related things happen here. Now then, let's continue the difficult conversation somewhere else. Hmm, however, even though I came to the human world, it is already night. Will some lodging place be okay? Searches said thoughtfully. Luffy sighed as he knew he had to do this. If that's the case, my house is available, he said neutrally. Everyone looked at him with open mouths, and Searches smiled as he said, Excellent in that case, I will be under your care, Luffy Kun. Luffy could see Rias looking at him with a pout and could only smile. You could tell that they were very similar, even in how they behaved with their older brothers. Chapter 18. Conversing with the Demon King at Haidu Mansion. No no, that was Rias' scream at what was happening. His brother was in the mansion with the boy he loves and his crew. It was clearly a situation she didn't want at all. Searches was enjoying the hospitality of Luffy's mother and was listening to the crew's stories. Then, Sanji, like the good pervert that he is, asked Searches, Excuse me, is that beautiful woman next to her that she has as a maid, is she single? Searches looked at Grafia with a smile and said calmly, In fact, she is my wife. Eeeeee. Sanji shouted in disbelief. Luffy smiled. He already imagined something like that since the woman gave off an aura similar to Nami's, and only someone like that could be the wife of a being as powerful as the Demon King. Grafia just pinched Searches' his cheek with an angry aura and said in a gloomy tone, I am the maid Grafia. I apologize for my master's boring jokes. It hurts, it hurts, Grafia, Searches said with pain. Many had a drop of sweat from this scene, and Luffy said with joy, ha ha ha, certainly a very unique couple. After all, a powerful man can only be next to a woman who conveys authority. I still remember when Nami hit me just for my nonsense. Ha 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 ha, he looked like a demon that would swallow anyone who stood in front of him oh, oh it hurts, it hurts, Nami. Nami began to pull Luffy's cheeks furiously, causing fear in the crew, and she only said in a dark voice. Maintain your composure when we are in front of important people I apologize for my idiot captain, he doesn't know how to behave in front of people like you. Nami, it hurts I'm sorry Luffy said trying to appease her. Everyone rolled their eyes at this, and Grafia smiled as she looked at Nami, apparently she had found a good candidate for adoptive sister. Sanji was on the ground in a puddle of his tears, saying that because the most beautiful women preferred men like them. Then, Searches looked at the Mujiwaras and said, but it is impressive to see people from another world here. And the adventures they told me seem so wonderful. I would like to hear more from them in the future. The Mujiwaras were pleased by such words, and Luffy said, well, we have experienced many challenges in pursuit of achieving our dreams. But we don't let anyone stop us from fulfilling them, and we always move forward because of them. Even if we have to fight against the world or God, we are willing to do it. This made Searches and Grafia smile, remembering how they were equals in pursuit of the future they so desired. At this moment, a certain grandfather appeared before them. Oh, Luffy. I see you have a visitor, Garp said with a big smile. Grandpa Luffy shouted when he saw him. Searches looked at the old man carefully, finding in him an aura as powerful as that of his father and mother, so he asked, Luffy Kun, is this man really your grandfather? That's how it is. He is someone who was called the hero of the navy for his achievements and for being the only one who could fight against Roger in his time. He is extremely powerful, and I have even witnessed that he can destroy a gigantic mountain with just his fist. Luffy said looking at his grandfather seriously. At these words, Searches and Grafia looked at the old man with clear amazement, and Garp said, Come on, it's not that big of a deal. I don't like the fame they put on me, and Roger was someone who was clearly on par with me. Anyway, in my family there have always been and always will be power monsters. The proof is in my stupid son and my idiotic grandson, both are men who have been able to scare our world with just their presence, ha 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 ha. The two demons thought that such a family must have a strange gene or inheritance that made them so powerful, and they thought about telling a certain woman that she would be very interested in this. So Grimory san are you also going to attend the school visit? Mickey asked with a smile. School visit? How is there a school visit? Garp asked with all his attention. Luffy turned pale at this and couldn't help but gulp at the situation. Oh, you don't know. I thought Luffy would have told him. Well, there will be a school visit in a few days, and as such, we will be able to see how our little ones attend their classes. Mickey said with an adorable smile. At this, Garp looked at Luffy with a big smile and said, Ha 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 ha, why didn't you tell me that I could see you attend classes? It is already decided I will attend that school visit like your grandfather. Luffy broke out in a cold sweat at what could happen on that school visit if someone like his grandfather attended. 
He wanted to die imagining all of his fans in front of Garp while they asked him to tell them what he was like when he was little. It would be the greatest shame of his life. Ahahaha, <laughs> it's good to see that Luffy Kun's grandfather cares about the education of his grandson. Answering his question, yes. I took a break from work, so I thought I would use this opportunity to check out my little sister's school and see what her classes are like. On the day of the visit, my father will also come. Searches said with a big smile. Ah, Rhea's father will also come, Mickey said excitedly. My father helped in the construction of Ku Academy. Like me, it seems that it is also a good opportunity for me to come visit. Although frankly speaking, he only wants to see Rhea's face. Searches explained with a childish tone. Ahahaha, <laughs> there's nothing wrong with that. Hey kid, would you like some rice crackers with some sake? Garp said, taking out a bag of crackers with a bottle of sake. Grandfather don't be so familiar with him remember that he is the Demon King Luffy shouted without being able to believe it. Garp looked at him with a frown and said, so what? It is as common as all of us to me, so I can treat it however I want. This left almost everyone with their mouths open, while Grafia laughed amused at the man's nonchalance, and searches began to laugh heartily as he said, ahahaha, I like this grandfather. In that case, I accept his invitation let's drink and eat all we want, since Japanese alcohol goes well with a capable mouth, and I love rice crackers. Ahahaha, <laughs> that's how you talk Brad. Let's forget about the complicated things and enjoy a good day off Garp said with a big smile. You're taking this world like a day off Luffy yelled furiously. The Demon King and the Navy hero just continued enjoying the evening, while their two favorite family members only sighed at their behavior. At night, no it can't be can't we sleep with Luffy. Rhea shouted, looking at his brother with a strict face. It was already bedtime, and Searches was in his bedding ready to sleep in the mansion, but he wanted to sleep one night with Luffy to talk to him. I want to talk to him a little while we are lying down. Sorry, Rhea's, but just for tonight lend me Luffy Kun. Searches said with a sweet smile. Luffy sighed at what was happening while he thought about the situation with Rhea's. She slept with him every night since that battle against Razor. He saw her some night sad for not being able to sleep with him, and he was noticing some dependence on him on her part. Robin and Akeno told him that Rhea's degree of dependency is similar to what Nami has on him now. One that is increasing every day. When he asked them about her feeling of not wanting to leave him, her response was that he was too cute to let go a response that she thought was typical of teenage girls. He heard from Rhea's that she now possesses a disease that if she doesn't sleep with him, she will die. Nami says that if she doesn't have him by her side now, she will be sad, and that is something he can't allow. To him they seemed like excuses I mean, how can someone die just because they can't sleep with a boy? It was absurd. If you look at it another way, those women have developed an extreme case of dependence on you. I suppose it is the consequence of being as pure and powerful a being as you are. Drake said with an amused smile. The be. After all, Hancock is the same, and she is a woman who doesn't need a man to keep going. I guess it's how they say. Power combined with pure heart attracts the opposite hex in an uncontrolled way. Luffy said with a sigh. Luffy Rhea shouted, hugging Luffy with love in front of his and Grafia's brother. Luffy couldn't help but feel some compassion for the poor girl who only wanted to be with the man he loves. Can you sleep alone? Is it okay without having me with you? Although I'm not well. Just thinking that you are not by my side said Rhea's with teary eyes. Forget it she's just a capricious little girl who acts like her favorite toy has been taken away from her. Luffy felt like that and it was hurting him. Oju Sama, let's return to the girls' room with the others. I'll be there too. Well, then searches Sama, Luffy Sama, good night, said Grafia, trying to take Rias away. The Redeed can only stretch out her hand in an attempt to stay in contact with Luffy, but even so, she is carried by the silver-haired girl to the girls' room as she says with pain. I know, Grafia. As they leave, a new person appears as she looks at Luffy with a serious face. I will allow you to sleep without us tonight only because the Demon King requested it. But I assure you that tomorrow night, I will use you as my pillow in every way possible, and you won't be able to refuse, good night, Luffy, Nami said before also going to the girl's room. They could see how Hancock followed her while she looked at Luffy with great pain, and that way, the two of them were alone in the room. Now, should we go to bed? Searches asked with a smile. Anyway, said Luffy, entering his bed. However, he can feel the great concentration of magic and power emanating from the Redeed, so he was wondering if he could defeat him in a serious battle. From the power he can feel, he knows that by just concentrating a little of his power, he can reduce an ordinary person to dust. He knows that if this person is at the top of the demons, it is because his power cannot be compared to that of others. It's like he's the pirate king in the underworld. With the lights out, the two were lying in their respective beds, and Luffy was a little nervous when searches told him, I heard you met Azazel. Luffy opened his eyes at this. If he mentioned that name so casually, it must be because he had seen him in person and he knows him very well. That's right, he answered calmly. 
I heard that he didn't do anything to you, but did he say anything to you? Searches asked curiously. I'll see you next time. That's what he said, Luffy replied simply. I see. Azazel has a strong interest in sacred gears. Your boosted gear is no exception. In fact, like you, a possessor person with a long longinus joined him. Searches explained seriously. This interested Luffy since he could guess who it was. For what purpose? He asked curiously. I don't know that. But, Azazel is the governor of an organization with the power to affect heaven, the underworld, and the human world. If he uses it, he will spread a lot of digression. However, he does not like war like Akabiel. That is why the fallen angels were the first to abandon the great war of the past. Searches said calmly. Luffy felt uneasy at such information. He didn't want to be close to someone like Azazel who might want to put him under his command. He feels comfortable with Rias because she respects her desire for freedom and gives him her duty as a demon. Searches could see his concern and said with a smile, don't worry. I guarantee you will be protected as well as your Nakamas. Finally, the legendary red dragon came to the demon's side, so I must give you good treatment. And also, my younger sister treats you with adoration. I've never seen Rias having so much fun, even in the underworld. I'm sure he must have fun every day thanks to you and your Nakamas. I feel like I should thank you. Monkey D. Luffy, I ask you with all my heart to take care of my little sister. I'm asking you as her older brother. Luffy looked at him in surprise. I knew very well that when a family member asks you to take care of the most beloved girl in the family, it is because you have enough confidence to be in charge of her well-being. It was as if they were giving you her hand in marriage, and he knew that very well. In fact, he knew that the promise he had made with the mill guy, Nami's father figure, was considered the same thing, and that he was somehow committed to the orange-haired girl for life. He smiled kindly and said in a calm voice, Don't worry. I will take care of Rias with everything I have and with my life if necessary. I know what it feels like as an older brother, because I had a brother who protected me in the same way. I know that an older brother has a duty to protect his younger siblings, and I can understand why you love Rias that way. Therefore, leave her sister in my hands, and you will see that she will be safe. Searches smiled happily at those words, seeing that this boy was one of a kind from him and said, I see. So Luffy Kun, wouldn't you call me by my name? Ani-san is fine too. Luffy rolled his eyes at him and said, well, I think I can call you Shinku, which means crimson in Japanese. The thing is that I usually give nicknames even to my allies, since I can't learn their names, and I come up with nicknames to talk to them. That's why I think Shinku would be a better way to talk to you. Searches smiled with joy and said with emotion, then let it be so I've never been given a nickname other than the Crimson Demon King, so I like the nickname. Luffy smiled back and said, in that case, nice to meet you Shinku. Searches smiled even more and said, likewise, Mugi Kun. The two laughed at their nicknames and just like that, they both went to sleep peacefully. The next day, Searches and Grafia were ready to leave the mansion as everyone saw them off. We're leaving, Grafia said with a smile. See you, Ani-sama. I hope you don't cause problems in the city. Rhea said saying goodbye to his brother. Bye. How do you think? See you at the school visit, little sister, Searches said with a big smile. Rhea's hugged him like a tender little sister, and he hugged her back. Then, he looked at Luffy and said, See you later, Mugi Kun. Clear see you later, Shinku Luffy said with a big smile. Everyone watched this with their mouths open and searches said to Grafia, Dresses? Mugi Kun gave me a great nickname. Yes, yes, whatever you say, Grafia said with disinterest. Rias looked at Luffy still with her mouth open, and he could only say, He's a good brother, don't you think? Almost everyone fell to the ground from the impression that he had formed such a close relationship with the Demon King himself, and he was so calm. Chapter 19 swimsuits. Days after, the CIO and Luffy's group were at the academy pool, since Ona had asked them to clean it as a favor for the student council. Very good. Let's clean this pool and then enjoy our reward, Rhea said excitedly. Yes all the girls shouted with the same emotion. Luffy smiled when he saw the enthusiasm of each one when Zoro said something annoying. Hey Luffy. Why should we help too? Luffy turned to see Zoro next to Yusup upset, although Sanji was upset because the girls asked to be alone with Luffy after cleaning, and he couldn't see them in their swimsuits, well Luffy could. Because how members of the club and members of my crew must help me. Come on, support those who have welcomed us into this world with this. Luffy said with a smile. The three looked at each other with a smile and decided to support the club. Everyone was excitedly cleaning the large pool, including the Mujiwaras, and in the end, the pool was as clean as glass. It's gratifying to see the result of our work, right, guys? Luffy said looking at his companions. Actually, yes. It's wonderful to help such beautiful ladies with this job, Sanji said with a smile. At least we can do things like this without much risk. It's relaxing, Yusup said with a smile. Rias approached them and said to Luffy's three companions, Sorry, but you can go back to the house now. We want to spend the day with Luffy after working on cleaning the pool. 
I hope you can understand it. Zoro and Yusuf could understand it, but Sanji looked at Luffy with some jealousy for having so much luck with women. The three retired to the mansion to continue the day in their own way, although Zoro had planned to spend the day in the mansion's pool with Toshigi. Then, Luffy and the girls changed into their swimsuits to enjoy the pool, and Luffy was on the edge of the pool, waiting for everyone to show up. First the first of the girls came out, already changed. How do I look, Luffy? Nami asked, walking in front of him. She was wearing an orange two-piece outfit that matched her hair and showed off a lot of her skin. Luffy looked at her with a smile and said, Marvelous. It looks great on you and you look pretty. Nami smiled proud of herself when the second girl appeared. Luffy, how do I look? Ria's asked, posing in front of him. Luffy was speechless at what he saw. She was wearing a white two-piece swimsuit that showed off her beautiful body. Her white skin and huge breasts were very visible in that swimsuit of hers, causing Luffy to stare at her. It's very pretty. You look like a beautiful mermaid from my world, Luffy said with admiration. Ria smiled victoriously while Nami looked at her with a smile. But the third girl came out of the room, smiling with amusement as she said, Yufufu, I see that the competition is tight to win Luffy Kun's attention. Luffy froze as he watched a Keno model a beautiful two-piece two-color swimsuit that showed off a lot of body. But before he could enjoy it anymore, another girl left the room with a smile. Yufufu, this looks fun. How do I look, Captain San? Robin asked, showing himself. She was wearing a purple two-piece swimsuit that showed off her mature body, and Luffy smiled at what he saw. You look spectacular, Robin, he said with a thumbs up. Then a certain black-haired woman came out who was smiling for the occasion. Luffy, how do I look? Hancock asked, posing in front of him. She was wearing a red one-piece swimsuit that showed off her very tempting body. Behind her, a certain white-haired girl came out of the locker room with a big smile. Let's enjoy the pool Yamato said happily. Behind them, Asia and Kaneko came out in their school swimsuits looking at the sky with a smile. It's a beautiful day for swimming, Asia said happily. Kaneko just looked at the water with a gloomy look, and then, Ria's approached Luffy to say, Luffy, sorry for asking you this, but... Luffy could understand what he wanted and he just said, don't worry. Now that I can do it, there is no problem. Later, Luffy guided Kaneko around the pool while he taught her how to swim. Sorry for bothering you with this, Luffy senpai, Kaneko said sadly. Don't worry, it doesn't bother me. I understand what it's like to not be able to swim due to some complication, and I'm happy to help you, Luffy said with a big smile. Kaneko blushed at those words and like that, they continued with swimming practice until they finally finished. When they were resting, Luffy could see that a competition was going on in the pool between two beautiful young women, and some of the girls were cheering for his favorite. Luffy watched the competition with some sweat as he thought, oh really? Nami and Ria's decided to compete to see who will put sunscreen on first. Competing like that for me couldn't be good. And Nami, seeing what Ria's had done by showing her swimsuit, had asked Luffy to put sunscreen on her naked body. However, Ria's was a little bothered by this and demanded that she be the one to have the blocker put all over her naked body. The two began to fight over who would have Luffy that day, until Robin suggested that they solve it in a swimming competition. And thus, we come to this. I won't lose to her. I will win this competition and have Luffy to myself all day. Nami thought as she swam gracefully. Yufufu, Nami is a good rival. I will win this, and so I can enjoy this day with Luffy at ease. Ria's thought as he swam with the same elegance. However, said prize item was kidnapped by a certain blue-haired girl who took it to the locker room. Luffy was thrown to the ground by Zenobia's great force, and the black-haired boy watched as she took off the top of her swimsuit with a smile. Zenobia what are you doing? Luffy shouted, somewhat scared. Zenobia just looked at him with a neutral expression and said, Monkey D. Luffy, there is something I want to talk about. You can call me Luffy, you're also an Akama, Luffy told him with a kind smile. Zenobia nodded and said with complete seriousness, So, Luffy. I'll tell you, would you have a child with me? At these words, Luffy stared at her with his mouth open for a long time, and upon seeing this, she said, Did you not hear me? Very good. Luffy, let's both have a child. Luffy continued in her place without being able to say anything, and she decided to repeat it for the third time. Luffy, let's both have a child. Eeeeeee. Luffy shouted in disbelief. But Zenovia covered her mouth so she wouldn't scream so loudly and said, SHH. Don't shout so loud. They will notice us. Luffy took her hand away angrily and said in an angry voice, Do you realize what you are asking me? She nods at his words and tells him, Yes, I'll explain it to you. I was born and taken to the church headquarters in Rome, thus, the element of being able to use sacred swords would be born from childhood. For God, for religion, I was committed to my training and studies. From my childhood, my dreams and goals, everything was intertwined with God and faith. For example, defeating demons was for the good of the Lord, and the one who propagated that was the Vatican. Well I believed that, I never doubted. That's why after becoming a demon, I can now say that my dreams and goals disappeared. 
Luffy looked at her in surprise and couldn't help but hate those in the church for trying to dictate people's dreams and goals. I understand that and I feel annoyed that they try to dictate your dreams when you are the one who has to choose them. But I still don't understand what it has to do with having a child with me, he said with a blank look. Let me finish. While serving God, I threw away that part of me, the happiness of a woman. My body, my heart, I sealed everything for the sake of faith. However, I am currently a demon. What should I do? At first, I didn't understand. But after asking my current master, Ria's Butchu, she told me. Demons are greedy beings, they satisfy their greed, they give greed, and they desire greed. Try to live how you want, that's what she said, Zenobia explained. Luffy could only sigh at the poor explanation Ria's gave him. Well a demon had the freedom to be greedy, that did not mean coveting a man's son. That is why I feel free to release what was sealed inside me and become skilled in it. So, my new goal, my dream is to give birth to a son, said Zenobia, looking at Luffy with determined eyes. Luffy could understand what he meant and clearly couldn't deny him his dream. If she wanted to have a child, she was free to take advantage of this new life to do so. However, this also involved him and he wanted to know why. Zenobia, I have a question and I want you to answer it with all your honesty. Why me? Luffy asked with complete seriousness. Zenobia looked at him confused and said, why you ask? Even I have a little confidence in my body as a woman. My breasts aren't as big as President Ria's or that Empress Hancock's, but they're like Nami's. I think they're worth seeing, don't you? Luffy sighed when he saw how much ignorance the girl had and told her in a strong tone. I'm not talking about that you are beautiful, and I can see that since I am a healthy boy, and I am interested in women like you, who are beautiful and powerful. But what I want to know is the reason why you chose me. You are a woman who could easily be with a guy who uses swords like Zoro, and who could easily be with someone you love. Why precisely me? Zenobia smiled kindly at her words and said, I appreciate you saying that, but I think you haven't realized your enormous potential. You possess the aura of a dragon and in addition to that, I have been able to discover with your Nakamas that you have the power of a powerful man. I have been told how you have fought against powerful characters in your world and how you have emerged victorious over even the most powerful creature in your world. For this reason, I have decided that if I want to have children, I want them to be yours so that they can be powerful like their father. You have the genes that every woman wants for her children. Luffy didn't know whether to feel proud or sad that what women want most from him are the genes he possesses. Then, Zenobia approached him and said, I know the demons have a very difficult time having children, especially if both are pure blood. But fortunately we are reincarnated and I suspect that your lineage increases the percentage. I think that if we try often we can have one in about five years at most. Oh, and don't worry about the kids. I will raise them, although if you want to give them your love, no problem. Unfortunately I have no experience with men, so I plan to practice from now on so that we can have good results in the future. Luffy looked at her cautiously, knowing that she was a serious problem for her chastity, and tried to get away from her when the door opened for the girls to find the scene of the two of them lying on top of each other. Luffy what does this mean? Nami shouted angrily. Ria's only showed a forced smile at the scene as she wondered how she could have missed this. Ara, Ara, that's unfair, Zenobia-chan. You can't take Luffy-kun's chastity before me, Akeno said in a playful tone as lightning bolts came out of his body. Yufufu, may I know what he was doing in the locker room so alone with Swordswoman-san, Captain-san? Robin asked with a demonic aura. Luffy, I hope you have a good explanation for what we're seeing, Hancock said furiously. Luffy could only see them with sweat, but Zenobia had to ruin everything. What's wrong, Luffy? Let's have a baby, she said with all the calm in the world. Let's have a baby was what sounded in the heads of all the girls at the door and at that moment, Nami and Ria's forcefully took Luffy out of the locker room. Zenovia then you and I will talk about this Ria said as they left. Zenovia could only stand there wondering what she did wrong. Luffy was taken to the pool and then sat on one of the towels and he looked at them with some fear. Oh really? I wasn't to blame, he said, trying to calm them down. Don't worry. I know very well that you would never do such a thing and that everything had to be her doing. After all, I know very well that women have that desire for you even in our world. Nami said with a sigh. Luffy sighed as he felt out of danger and then saw Nami lying face down on a towel without her bikini top and a bottle of sunscreen on the floor. I'm ready. My body is all yours, Luffy, she said with a seductive smile. Luffy looked at her surprised and took the bottle from her as she said, okay, if you want. And so, Luffy proceeded to apply the sunscreen to Nami's soft skin. He was enjoying feeling her flesh in her hands and being able to touch her skin since she allowed him to. Then, Nami turned around so that her breasts were exposed to hers and said, Would you like to put the sunscreen on my breasts? Luffy looked at Nami's breasts as if hypnotized. Upon seeing them more closely, he could see that they were very beautiful and that he had fallen in love with an unparalleled beauty. He smeared her hands with a sunscreen liquid and proceeded to apply it to those voluptuous breasts. 
Hayanami moaned with ecstasy. Luffy decided to enjoy this wonderful feeling, but a sensation on his back distracted him. Yufufu, are you enjoying applying sunscreen to your queen like that? Riaz asked sensually. She was hugging Luffy with her completely bare chest, and the black-haired boy could feel her two mounds directly on his back. Hey, Riaz, he's with me so don't get involved, Nami shouted furiously. Riaz looked at her with a face that said she didn't care and said, I don't care, Nami. Luffy, would you like to come with me and have a fun time with me? You could suck my breasts and then enjoy the day uniting our bodies into one. Saying that, she bit Luffy's ear, causing great stimulation in the black-haired man, but. Boom, the jumping platform of the pool near them was shattered by a lightning bolt so full of power that the orange-haired woman had sent. They both looked at the person responsible for such an act to find Anami with her hand outstretched, releasing lightning bolts from her and a face so full of fury that it could make a god tremble. You're going too far, Riaz. I'm not going to give you Luffy today, little tomato princess of destruction, she said in a dark voice. Riaz smiled so sadistically that a certain priestess would be proud of her and manifesting her power of destruction, she said in a sweet voice. Oh, sorry. But I think you'll have to share it even today, you arrogant climate kitten. Immediately, the entire place was filled with destructive rays and red aura that began to destroy everything in its path. Meanwhile, Luffy just went to a corner and said, well, let's let them solve their problems that way. It is not good to get involved in women's fights, even if you are a god. I am sure that all men in the universe know it. After all. There is no one more powerful than the woman you have as a partner. Not even the gods are spared from their beatings. Chapter 20. Meeting of Rivals. The next day, Luffy was walking alone to the academy since the others had something to do before going, and he had to walk alone. He was thinking about what had happened in the pool the other day, when he felt a great pain in his arm caused by his gauntlet. He wondered what had happened when he saw a silver-haired boy in the corner of the academy looking at him with a smile. Luffy could sense that he was very powerful and that he could not underestimate him when the boy approached him to say, it's a good school. Luffy looked at him cautiously and said, yes, it's a place where I can relax a little. The boy looked at him with a challenging smile, worthy of someone who loved battles and said, I am Vali, the hacker Yuku, the ephemeral dragon. At these words, Luffy narrowed his eyes as he continued to stare at him. If she was his destined rival, he meant that this match marked the beginning of their fight. Drake had told him that he would fight him even if he didn't want to, since both dragons were enemies in many ways, and Luffy had to accept that, although he was excited to fight someone who might be on the same level as him. This is the second time we meet here, Dragon Whales, Sekiryute, hi duty Luffy. Vali said with challenging eyes. Luffy could feel how his arm was burning, but he endured it to keep his power-filled gaze on his rival. Vali noticed this and smiled with emotion when he saw that his rival had such a powerful spirit. Then, he pointed his finger at him and said, I can feel enormous power in you, but I think you are not at my level yet. For example, if I used magic on you here. However, two swords appeared before his neck. A huge blue one and a black katana. Vali could see how Zenovia and Zoro pointed their swords at his neck with a defiant look. I don't know who you are, but you will be cut off if you get any closer to my captain, Zoro said with demonic eyes. I cannot allow you to start the fight with a red dragon here, white dragon, said Zenovia with cold eyes. However, Vali looked at both of them and said, you better stop with that. The green-haired swordsman shows no fear, and that interests me, but your girl, your hands are shaking. As he had said, Zenobia's hands trembled too much in the presence of Vali, and Luffy could see that the power of his rival was enormous. It's okay to brag. Him not knowing the difference between the opponent's strength and yours is evidence of that. There is a decisive power difference between us. Those who can't beat Kakabiel can't beat me either, said Vali, looking at Luffy with analytical eyes. Luffy looked at him with a sigh at those words. He clearly had to teach this rival that he couldn't underestimate him either. Hi do D Luffy, what position do you think you are in this world? Vali asked with a smile. This caused Luffy to raise his eyebrow, and Vali continued, Counting from the first, in your conditions with a complete balance breaker, it would be a three-digit number between 100 to 500 or even more. I'm going to stop you right there. It's obvious that you don't know everything about me, and I think it's an insult that you give me a position without considering what I'm going to tell you, said Luffy, stopping him with pure seriousness. Bali looked at him in surprise at his words, and Luffy looked at the rest of his Nakamas and the Gremory group, who were watching everything with interest. Let me explain to you. I am not from this world. I come from a world where power and will is everything. In that world, even as nothing more than a meat-loving idiot, I have faced beings that can rival those here. I have faced several Shichibikes, who have a power similar to that of a middle-class demon, I have also faced several admirals at the same time, who have the power of a high-class demon more or less, I was in three wars and came out. With life of two, and I have faced the four Yonkas who possess the power of a supreme-class demon, and I could even put them in middle-god class. Tell me if my level is still among the 100 strongest after hearing that. 
Luffy said with total seriousness. Bali was with his eyes open and inside him, the desire to face his rival grew more and more. Also, if I had to put myself on the list of the strongest people in my world, I think I would be among the five strongest and maybe the fourth or fifth strongest. I know the first one is a character called him, since he is the one who rules the world, so he must be the most powerful. The second is undoubtedly Shanks, his power is greater than anyone in my world, and he could easily defeat me if I don't get serious. In third place I would put Blackbeard, since his ability to use more than one fruit puts him in that position. And fourth place is between me and the damned Akainu, since if he is fleet admiral, he can clearly fight me for that position. Although my father can fight for the place too, Luffy continued with an ironic smile. Bali was very excited with this information. If he was so powerful in his world, then he could give him the battle he had so desired. However, I have that place without having possessed the boosted gear. Now that I own it, I think my place in that world could rise to second place if I can train enough. The point is that with this information, you can deduce my power a little bit. But you still need to know what my ability is and the type of power I can handle. With all that, I think I can be even with you. Luffy concluded with a smile. Everyone smiled at Luffy's speech, and Riaz was proud to see how he showed that they couldn't underestimate him. Volley laughed excitedly and said, Ahahaha, and I thought I would never find a worthy opponent in the world. After God died, only the gods of the other factions were good opponents for me. But now, you are what I have been looking for so much. Hi do D. Luffy. Monkey D. Luffy, Luffy corrected him suddenly. Bali looked at him with some confusion, and the black-haired man continued, He is my real name, the one he had in my world. I belong to a very powerful clan in my world, a nearly extinct clan, and the monkey family has been known for powerful members being born in each generation. Each member of my family has left their mark on the world and have become a figure to fear for others. So, I want you to call me by my real name so that our battle has more importance. Bali smiled with more emotion and continued, So be it. Monkey D. Luffy, I will be waiting for the day of our fight. Become stronger and when we fight, face me with everything you possess we'll see you soon, my most desired rival. And with that, he left the place calmly. However, the air continued to be heavy because of what had happened, and it took a while for them to finally breathe. Is that the white dragon? He seems like a guy who just looks for battles all the time, Nami said with a frown. He looks strong. Even though he was pointing my katana at him, he just looked at me as if he wasn't more powerful than him. You have to be careful, Luffy, Zoro said seriously. It's as if he didn't feel satisfied with the opponents he has faced. If he fights Luffy, I don't doubt that he will constantly chase him to fight. Sanji said with a sigh. It seems that he has knowledge of history if he knows which beings are in the first places. Maybe he has studied archaeology for his purpose. Robin said thoughtfully. It's scary he notes that he is just as powerful as Luffy and that he has no qualms about attacking anyone just because of his desire to fight. I don't want to see him again, Yusup said terrified. He's handsome and powerful, but he still wouldn't be able to surpass Luffy, Hancock said with a smile. Luffy felt Riaz grab his hand and squeeze it, showing all his concern about this matter. Luffy could only smile at him so that he knew that nothing bad would happen, and that way, they entered the academy normally. Later, everyone was in the club enjoying the day, when Nami asked Rhea something that caught her attention. There he is. How can a demon advance in rank? I mean, how can you go up to middle class and then to upper class? Everyone looked at Rhea's with the same doubt, and she smiled as she began to explain. To increase your status as a high-class demon, the ways are divided into three simple ones. The first is to continue making packs with humans and little by little increase your rating. However, it is somewhat difficult to achieve this way. It takes packs with really important humans like the president or some world leader to get you promoted in class, and there are very few who achieve it. I don't think Luffy can achieve it that way. He wouldn't get along with any world leader if in our world he doesn't get along with the celestial dragons at all. He would have to be a leader who really agrees with Luffy, and I have learned that in this world that type of leader does not exist, said Nami, remembering what she learned from the game of Grand Theft Auto. I think the same. The second way is to perform a war achievement. Take the battle against Kakabiel as a good example. If the demon accomplishes an extraordinary feat in a faction-shaking event, the underworld will evaluate him to see if he is worthy of promotion. Luffy has already been evaluated for the battle we had, and I must say that he is very well regarded by the higher-ups. I wouldn't be surprised if they consider promoting it as soon as possible. Riaz continued with a smile. That's the ideal way for Luffy, he just has to fight a powerful enemy, and he can prove his power to the higher-ups, Hancock said proudly. I have the same opinion. For Luffy it is a piece of cake to demonstrate his power in a battle, and with this, he will be able to rise in rank. Zoro said with a smile. Yes, but the problem is that you don't see battles of that style very often because the factions don't fight that way as much nowadays. The third way is to be active in the raiding games. 
It is the shortest way since if a demon manages to prove his power in the games, the evaluation he has in the rating games in which he has participated will help him be promoted. Rias concluded. Well he is perfect, I'm sure that in a short time, Luffy will be a high-class demon Nami said with conviction. Ara. Are you really that sure? Rias asked him with amusement. Of course and I can even make a prediction of how he would do it, just give him one important event for him to be promoted to middle class, and one or two games for him to reach upper class Nami said confidently. Everyone looked at her in amazement at that prediction, and Rias sighed as she said, I don't think he's that easy. Luffy will need the higher ups to see everything he is capable of, so they will promote him. Do you really think it will be so easy for him to achieve it in just three events? Nami smiled like a cat and said, I'm totally sure and I'm willing to bet on it. At this, everyone turned pale and Rhea smiled slyly as she said, Oh, that's interesting. And what will we bet? If I win, Luffy's chastity will be completely mine, Nami said with all her pride rising from her. Nami, I don't think Luffy tried to say in his defense. Okay, and if I win, his chastity will be mine, and I will become the mother of his first child, Rhea said with all her pride at stake. Rias, that's not Luffy tried to tell her now, scared. Made my bet would be that Luffy would become a middle class demon after an important event and a high class after one or two games. Nami said, extending her hand to Rias. Nami, I think Luffy tried to stop her. And my bet will be that he will become a middle class demon after several events and two games, and a high class demon after several feats, and even if he manages to save the world Rias said convinced and shaking Nami's hand. Girls, this is Luffy tried to intervene, upset. So the bed is made, Nami said with a feline smile. You said it, Rhea said with a demon smile. And in this way, a bet was made between two cunning women with a poor boy, without being able to give his opinion on what they were doing. Chapter 21. School visit. A day of the school visit, everyone was in front of the entrance to the academy, while Mickey Hayato and Garp said goodbye to Luffy's group with Rhea's and Asia included. We'll go to school later to see them in their classes, Mickey said with a smile. Ha 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 ha. I hope to see great things from you, Luffy. Garp said with great emotion. Luffy could only look away in embarrassment as he wondered if it was a good idea for his grandfather to show up at the academy. After all, the school visit is an open demonstration of the student life of young people, and parents have the opportunity to witness the school life of their children. Asia only gave a vigorous yes to Mickey's words, while Luffy and Rias were with a black cloud in their heads. What's wrong with them? Aren't you excited about the school visit? Nami asked looking at them. We are not interested, they both said with disgust. The Mujawaras couldn't help but giggle at how equal the two of them were. After all, they both had relatives who gave them a lot of trouble in front of others. Searches with Rias and Garp with Luffy. It is normal for both of them to hate their family members seeing what they are like in their daily lives, so they would hate them seeing them in their school life. If two crimson-haired men and an energetic old man with a big laugh visited their classrooms, it would become a big topic of discussion. Thus, the entire group entered the academy to take their classes, and after entering the classroom, the two members of the new perverted trio asked Luffy, Is your mother coming to the school visit? Luffy just looked at them with a bad face and said, Where's my grandfather will come with her? They both pouted and Mitsuda said, It must be very unpleasant that your grandfather comes here. I still remember when I met him he gave me a painful blow on the head for being a pervert. It was horrible he is someone I don't want near me, much less him being my grandfather, Motohama said with fear. Luffy could only sigh at his words when a certain blue-haired girl appeared before everyone while he looked at Luffy. Luffy, she said seriously. What's wrong, Zenobia? Luffy asked, paying attention to her. Zenobia lowered her head with some sadness and said with a regretful tone, Sorry for saying that kind of thing so suddenly the other day. This caught the attention of the others, and Nami asked in a reproachful tone, Are you talking about that topic you talked about in the pool? Well, you would do well to apologize to me and Luffy, because I didn't like what you tried to do at all. Luffy opened his eyes when he realized what it was. Zenobia's move to try to have a child with him. Nami had been really angry about that event, and she was like that for a few days, until Luffy assured her that she wouldn't have any children with anyone without her having her first child. Zenobia just bowed and said in a sad tone, Continue talking without thinking about you. You spoke totally without thinking about him next time think about what you are going to say or do before acting Nami said very angrily. Calm down, Nami Luffy told her, trying to calm her down. How do you want me to calm down? She she kidnapped you and tried to Nami shouted furiously. But Luffy covered her mouth so she wouldn't say anything that would get him in big trouble, but Zenobia had to damage everything by saying, after all, doing all those things so suddenly is difficult, I think. That is why. The blue net took some packages out of his pocket, and Luffy's eyes widened when he realized what they were. We should practice using this first, she said with a tone so serious that it was not appropriate for the environment. You idiot what are you doing taking this out in public? Luffy yelled at him as he took the packages from him with a red face. What is that, Luffy? 
Nami asked, curious about the packages. Luffy looked at her with some conflict since in her world there were no such things, and if she found out what they were, he was the one who was going to have a lot of problems. I thought it would be appropriate to use the condoms to practice before doing it properly. After all, that means you can have Hex safely without fear of getting pregnant. Zenobia said as if it were the most normal thing in the world. This caused everyone to pay attention to him and instantly, the rumors of all the girls in the room could be heard about it, did she bring condoms for Luffy-kun? Another bitch wants to cajole him. Our poor Luffy-sama is surrounded by evil cats. We must protect it. Luffy looked at Zenobia with fury and shouted, Look what you did, stupid, now you have created a very big problem. Did things like that exist? I could have had happy nights with Luffy in our world, Nami said, somewhat irritated. Don't think about that either Luffy shouted at her, looking at her astonished. It's good that Asia and the others also use them. Unplanned Hexwell relations could affect their lives. The relationship between a man and a woman is complicated. Zenobia said with such a serious tone. She approached Asia and the others to give each of them a condom. Asia had a confused face while Nami looked at the condom with shiny eyes just like Robin and Hancock. However, a certain pervert didn't miss the opportunity and whispered something to the girls that made them blush while Asia passed out on the floor. What did you tell them, Kiryu? Luffy asked in a dangerous tone. The girl with glasses just looked at him with a lustful look and said in a perverted tone, Will Luffy can do something amazing with the girls? But he asked me if he will be okay. If you sleep with Zenobia, then Asia and the others will be. Kiryu, stop it, Luffy yelled angrily. Asia managed to wake up from her faint and looked at Luffy agitatedly while she turned as red as an apple. Heavens. I told you, girls. If they don't start moving soon, Luffy can would become a problem. There are many formidable rivals around him, you know. If they continue to rest on their laurels, before you know it, it will be taken away from you. You don't want that, do you? A man with the essence of an undesirable woman, said the pervert with a lustful smile. Kiryu, I told you to stop your delusions as an expert in hexuality and perversion, Luffy told him even more angrily. I'm worried. You're okay with me being one of his powerful allies, right? I'm fine with the calm environment too, but sometimes, they gotta do what they gotta do even you girls are mature enough to be eaten Kiryu continued as she hugged herself with a shudder. What are you talking about, Kiryu? Nami asked, now interested in her speech. Then, Kiryu took Luffy's hand and said with a wicked smile, Fufufufu, good hands for a woman's body. You don't have long nails and that's good. After all, men who cut their nails well usually do so because they play intensely with women's bodies. Yes, to take the body of a woman, if you had long nails, then it would be inconvenient. That is a false accusation it's just a coincidence Luffy shouted upset. But he looked at Nami with wide eyes as he realized something, and the orange-haired woman could only look away. Nami you have cut my nails not only here, you've done it in our home too he said, looking at her accusingly. Indeed. When they lived in her world, after meeting in those two years, Nami had started cutting his fingernails on her trip. She hadn't asked him why since he didn't care about her, but she had managed to notice how Robin looked at him with an amused smile, and how Sanji was angry at him sometimes for no reason. After arriving in this world, she did that task again, and Riaz had also joined in. But this new information, she already knew why they did it. Luffy, you bucking bastard Mitsuda shouted angrily. That sick or something Madahama shouted furiously. How terrifying as expected from Luffy-kun. You are a very manly man who gives off an aroma full of hexuality, Kiryu said with ecstasy. Buck you Luffy shouted angrily. Hours later, class had started and from the back door, everyone's parents had started to enter. The class was English, and the teacher seemed somehow more excited than usual, as he distributed a rectangular object trapped in a bag to all the students. Luffy looked at his piece of clay with a frown and watched as the teacher began to say with great enthusiasm, Ready? Try to do whatever you want with that clay I gave you. An animal, a person, a house is also fine. Whatever image comes to mind, try to give it shape. A conversation in English is also included in that. Luffy looked at him with an apathetic face as he thought, that is not true what English teacher makes his students make clay figurines. He gives a normal language class, moron, and he does it on a school visit for me, he never wanted to be an English teacher and ended up here through bad luck, let's try the teacher shouted with joy. No let's try in what world is there an English class with clay. Thought Luffy with a twitch in his head. Luffy looked back to see his grandfather smiling at him with a thumbs up and turned his gaze to the piece of clay with a black cloud on his head. He put his hands on it and tried to think of something he could do. He went through several things in his life, and a scene flashed through his mind where he was with his crew as they joyfully enjoyed a banquet on the sunny. A tear came from his eyes, and he thought about whether he would live that wonderful life again one day. Hi oh hi kun. Luffy opened his eyes at the professor's call and saw how he was staring at his piece of clay with his mouth open. Looking down, he almost let out a scream when he saw that there was a miniature version of the sunny with the entire mini crew on top of it. How did I do this? 
he thought in disbelief. Wonderful, Haidu Kun. And to think you had such talent. This class was the right one after all. Once again I was able to bring out the hidden ability of a student said the teacher with tears coming out of his eyes. Right class shit, you just want to escape from the class you don't like thought Luffy with a twitch in his head. It's beautiful said a girl with tears in her eyes. It's a work of art said another with shiny eyes. Luffy Sama is an artist said another with hearts in her eyes. And Yujiwara saw the figure with a smile and different expressions. It's so beautiful, Luffy are home while we enjoy a banquet, Nami said with tears coming out of her eyes. The job, Captain Zoro said respectfully. The work worthy of an artist Sanji said with some tears. It's so beautiful, Luffy Yusuf shouted with big tears. It's beautiful, Hancock said with a smile. Luffy watched his work with a smile, when suddenly the scream of a girl could be heard who said, 5,000 yen I buy your beautiful work of art for 5,000 yen. No, 6,000 I will take care of him as he deserves another shouted. I will pay 7,000 yen, I will be very careful with this wonder made by Luffy Sama's wonderful hands shouted another. Do not joke I'll buy it, I will put her on an altar as a divine object, I'll give 8,000 yen shouted another. But the figure was suddenly taken over by a robin who was looking at the girls in the class with a murderous look while she said in a dark voice, no one will touch our treasure. Luffy and his nakamas could only see robin with a smile and burst out laughing at her action. Chapter 22. Meeting a magical girl. At lunchtime, it's very beautiful, Rhea said as he looked at Luffy's artwork. Luffy's group stood outside the gym with Rhea's, Akeno, and Asia as they looked at the clay sculpture Luffy created in English class. Ara, Ara, it's a beautiful figure. You can see on the ship how Luffy Kun and his crew are having a great time, Akeno said with amusement. It's true. I can see from the miniature figures on the ship how they are happy and enjoying their adventures. Ah, how I wish I could enjoy the same thing, said Rias with a dreamy face. Luffy looked at her with a smile as he remembered the promise they made before the game against Razor, but Akeno told him in a sensual tone, would you make a sculpture for me next time? I would like one of my entire body. If you want I can take off my clothes and you can also touch me. Really? Luffy asked without believing it. But his cheeks were pulled by Nami and Rias as they said with an angry face. He will not do it. Fufufufu. It seems that Navigator San and President San do not agree with your offer. Priestess San, Robin said to Akeno with amusement. Then, Nami asked Rias curiously. By the way, Rias. Did your brother come to the school visit? Rias patted her head in frustration and said with a sigh. Yeah. He came with my father. Some in Luffy's group pitied her for her misfortune, while well, Luffy sympathized quite a bit as her grandfather caused a ruckus in her class when he said that his grandson was a spectacular grandson and obviously gained the interest of all the girls in the classroom who came towards him to ask questions about Luffy. The black-haired boy experienced the greatest embarrassment of his life while well, he listened to his grandfather tell the girls how he had been a chubby baby when he was born and that since he was a baby he ate a lot. I'll accompany you in your suffering, he told the Retid with sympathy. Then, Kiba appeared before them as he said with a smile, Ah, but you. And the others are here too. Ara, Yudo. Do you want to buy tea? Rias asked him with interest. Kiba just pointed towards the hallway and said calmly, No. For some reason, I heard that a magical girl was doing a photography event, so I came to see. At that answer, everyone looked at each other with confusion and went to the place Kiba was talking about. When they arrived, they could see many students taking photos of a girl who was wearing the Magical Girl costume from Magical Girl, Mil Kiss 7 Alternative. Luffy knew that suit since one of his clients wore it all the time, although he was too manly for it to fit well, but the black-haired man did not discriminate. When Rias arrived next to him, she was shocked when she saw who he was. It can't be she said with a sigh. Do you know her? Nami asked interested. I don't care who she is she is beautiful, I want to meet her Sanji shouted with hard eyes. The most likely thing is that he won't even say hello to you, Zoro said mockingly. What did you say, Marimo? What you heard? They both began to argue, but they heard Saji appear in the gym and shout with authority. Hey, hey you, the one doing a photoshoot on a public road. Behind him, the girls from the student council followed him to help him maintain order, and the blonde continued trying to disperse all the people. Hey, hey disperse, disperse today is public demonstration day, don't make a mess in this place, Saji shouted professionally. Everyone who had been photographing the magical girl left the gym in disgust until only the student council members and Luffy and Rhea's groups remained. You two, please don't wear that kind of suit. Wait, are you a proxy? Even if so, know that there is a dress code according to the place. This is problematic, Saji said to the girl in the costume. Hey, but this is my uniform, said the girl with a cute pose. Is this girl sick in the head? Almost everyone in Luffy's group thought. Saji gritted his teeth at the girl's response, but upon seeing Rias, he changed his attitude and lowered his head as he said respectfully, Oh, it's Rias senpai. He came at the right time. He was guiding the demon king and senpai's father. 
Then, they saw how Rhea's brother entered the gym with his father and the president of the student council, Sona Citri, to see what was happening. What's wrong, Saji? I have always told you to solve things consistently, Sona said with an angry face. But as soon as she saw the magical girl, she stopped talking. Sona Chan, I found you the girl shouted with joy. It was hung on the poor student president and Sona was clearly showing that she was suffering. Luffy's group looked at them with a drop of sweat and Luffy only approached them to ask Sona. I guess she's your sister, right, Sona? The magical girl looked at him with wide eyes and asked, how did you know, nice boy? Luffy smiled with melancholy eyes and said in a distant tone, because they remind me of those days when my older brother Ace and I were children. You could say that we had the same relationship as you but in reverse. I was very attached to my brother, he loved him too much and he was my idol to follow, well he took care of me and he protected me when he got me into trouble. Oh it's pretty. And what happened to your wonderful Ani chan Asked the girl with sparkling eyes. Luffy just made a dark face, a face that only reflected sadness and said in a sad voice, he died. He saved my life when they were going to kill me and he died for me. I still feel sad about his death, but I know he did it so he could follow my dream and live. He was the best older brother I could have had. Then he saw how the girl was shedding tears while she looked at him even with those shiny eyes and hugged him while she said in a loud voice, wow, what a good brother he was a wonderful brother you are a good boy I like you even more, if Sona were in danger, I would give my life without a doubt for her. Luffy could only pat his head as he watched as Sona was sighing, although he also had some tears over Luffy's story. Rias approached Nami and asked, that's true, yeah. Luffy's brother died after suffering an attack from a man named Akainu that was aimed at him. A sacrificed himself so that his brother could follow his dream, and the poor guy suffered a lot. I wanted to be with him at that moment, but I was on an island in the sky and I couldn't leave, Nami told him with some tears. Then, searches approached them and said to the magical girl, I see you also came, Sir Afal. Some looked at the girl with interest and Rhea said with a smile, This is Sir Afal of Ithan Sama. She is one of the four mass of the underworld, and she is Sona's older sister. Eh? Almost everyone in Luffy's group shouted. Luffy could only look at the girl with an amazed expression, and Rias approached Serafal as he said, Serafal Sama, it's been a while. Ara, Rias Chan. How long? Have you been well? Serafal asked him in a very cute tone. This left most of them a little nervous, although Sanji was looking at Serafal with hard eyes. Why yes. Thank you. Did you come to visit Sona's class? Rias asked, somewhat uncomfortable. Yeah. Sona Chan is bad. She didn't tell me anything about today heavens due to the surprise, she was already thinking about attacking heaven. Serafal said with a cute pout. For that reason was she going to attack heaven? I don't know if she's joking or being serious. Thought Luffy with a drop of sweat. Then, Rias looked at Luffy and said, Luffy, it would be nice if you and your Nakamas greeted her. After all, he liked you. Luffy nodded and smiled at Serafal as he said, Nice to meet you. My name is Monkey D. Luffy. I am the pawn of Rias Gremory, and I am also the captain of the Mujuwaras. It's a pleasure to meet you. Captain of the Mujuwaras. What is that? Serafal asked curiously. It's my pirate crew. The truth is that we are from another world where powerful pirates exist, and I am one of the four Yonkas, which are the four most powerful pirates in the world. This is part of my crew, and they are the officers of my crew, said Luffy as he pointed to the members of his crew. Are you some kind of powerful character from another world? Incredible then you are ultra powerful in your world if you are one of the four most powerful pirates marvelous you are like a Mayu of your world and who are your officers? Serafal said with shining eyes while he was too close to Luffy. Sister, you're making Luffy cun uncomfortable, Sona yelled at her in annoyance. But, Sona-chan I want to know everything about Luffy cun he is the only boy who has managed to cause me much interest and besides, he is a great brother from what he told me, you should be like him, Sona-chan Serafal told him with a pout. Sona's head twitched at those words, and Luffy could only give her an apologetic look as he said to Sir Afal gently, it will be an honor to introduce you to my officers. First we have my acting captain and navigator. Nami, who will also become my pirate queen when she achieves my dream of being the king of the pirates. Pirate king. What is that title that sounds so wonderful? Sir Afal asked with emotion. Oh, it is the title given to the pirate who manages to find the most coveted treasure in our world. The One Piece. Whoever manages to find the hidden island and get hold of the One Piece treasure will become the king of the pirates. But to achieve this, he must overcome the most powerful pirates in his path and also overcome the people who will try to prevent him from getting there. Therefore, the title of Pirate King has two meanings. That of the freest person in the world and that of the most powerful pirate of all. Luffy explained with a smile. Sugoi it's as wonderful a title as Magical Girl so, will she be your future pirate queen? Serafal said as he looked at Nami with great interest. The orange-haired woman bowed and introduced herself elegantly as he said, Nice to meet you, Sir Afal Sama. 
My name is Nami, and I am both the acting captain of the crew and the navigator. My skills are navigation, cartography, weather forecasting, and I am also a good fighter with my staff and atmospheric skills. So you can use lightning as if it were magic. Seraphil asked with excitement. Science, my staff works with science and I can use more than lightning. I can use wind, water, lightning and even clouds with my staff, Nami explained with a smile. Incredible you're like a magical weather girl I like her a lot I hope we can chat with each other again, Seraphil said with great joy. The orange-haired girl could only smile at her words, and then, Luffy introduced the following. Then we have the swordsman and vice-captain of the crew. Hirano Zoro. The green-haired man only greeted with a yo and Seraphil looked at him with a serious face. He gives off an aura similar to ours. It is a familiar aura, like that of an ancient demon. I see that you have a good swordsman, Luffy Kun. She said with a serious face that was not seen much. Yes, it is very special. Well, next is our cook and kick style fighter, Sanji, said Luffy, introducing the blonde. Sanji took Seraphol's hand and kissed it as he offered her a rose and said, It is a pleasure to meet such a beautiful queen, this knight will protect her with his life. Seraphol just smiled sweetly at him and said in a cute tone, I don't like men who want to protect me because it makes me feel like a weak woman. Sorry, but I don't like you. Sanji fell to the ground with a black cloud on his head, and Luffy decided to continue with the introductions. Well, next is Yusuf, our sniper and inventor. Yusuf stood in front of Seraphol and said proudly. Hello, I am Captain Yusuf, and I have more than 8,000 men under my command. Seraphol looked at him with a smile and said in that cute tone. It's a lie, right? No, no, it's true, Yusuf said with a smile. It's useless. Hell, I can detect lies easily. So I can tell when someone is lying to me or not. Very useful, right? Seraphol said in a cheerful tone. Yusuf just went to a corner with a black cloud over his head, and Luffy continued with the introductions naturally. Next is Robin and she is the archaeologist of the crew. Robin bowed respectfully and said, It is an honor to meet you, Queen San. My name is Nika Robin, and I am the one who keeps the history of the crew. Seraphol looked at her with a smile and said, You are very nice. You look like many demons in the underworld. Then, Luffy pointed at Hancock and said, She is not part of the crew, but she is part of the girls who will be my wives, and she will also be part of my fleet with her crew. This is Bo Hancock, and she is one of the captains of the Mujiwara fleet. Hancock looked at him in amazement at those words, but then stood proudly and said elegantly, My name is Bo Hancock, captain of the Kujas, and one of the captains of the Mujiwara fleet, as well as one of the future wives of the future king of the pirates a pleasure. Seraphol looked at her with a smile and said, She is a woman full of power and strength. I like her a lot. After the introductions, Luffy looked at Seraphol with a smile and said, This is my crew. It is somewhat small, but we have been able to become the strongest with the passage of time. The demon queen gave him a big smile and said happily, They are a magnificent crew for me they are already the strongest crew I know you will become the pirate king, and when that happens, we will celebrate together like the pirate king and the magical girl, Levi Tan. Then, he looked at searches next to his father to say, Oh, I hadn't seen you, Uncle Gremory, she said with a smile. Yes, Seraphol Sama. Is this another novel uniform? Somehow, I try to think about the pressure of being a demon king, but Ziodicus Gremory said with a drop of sweat. Ara, uncle. You do not know. This is the fashion of this country, said Seraphol with a cute smile. Ah, so that's it. It seems that I am ignorant, Mr. Gremory said nervously. Ah, ha, ha. Father, don't believe him, said Searches, laughing. Everyone saw the Gremory family with a drop of sweat, and Luffy asked Rias. Hey, is the demon queen. Rias could only sigh and said with embarrassment, I forgot to say it no, I didn't mean to say it. But the current four demon kings, they are all of this form. When they are alone, they are very relaxed, in a very extreme way. Luffy's group could only open their mouths at those words, and then, they saw how Sona shouted at her sister with fury. Sister this is my school and I was entrusted with the job of student council president, no matter how close the family members are, their behavior is too much I can't approve of that kind of outfit. It can't be, Sona-chan if he tells me, Sona-chan, your sister will be sad Sona-chan doesn't know that her sister is admired as the magical girl, since with my shining staff, I will erase the angels and fallen angels, Seraphol said sadly. Sister, be careful. If my sister uses her demon queen staff, then this small country will be destroyed several times. Sona said with great shame. They look a lot like me and Ace when we were kids. Thought Luffy with a smile. I can't stand it anymore, Sona shouted as she left with tears. Wait, Sona-chan, what are you doing leaving your sister behind? Seraphol shouted with tears running behind her. Please don't follow me, Sona shouted furiously. No, don't abandon your sister, so soon. with more tears. I have asked you many times not to add the tan in my name Sona shouted, even more fed up. 
And just like that, both sisters disappeared from the gym in a somewhat strange chase. Yeah. The Citri house is peaceful. Don't you think so too, Ria Tan? Searches said looking at his little sister with a smile. Ani sama, don't add the tan, and don't call me that please either, the Redeed said in a dark tone. This brought another drop of sweat to Luffy's entire group, and then, certain people appeared before them. Oh, it's Luffy and the boys. Mickey said appearing. Ahahaha, it's good to see you, grandson Garp said with great joy. Mom, Grandpa Luffy said with surprise. Searches looked at the people who appeared with a smile and asked Luffy, Yugi kun, are they your relatives? Luffy could only sigh and said, yeah. They are my mother and my grandfather. I see, Searches said with a smile. Then, he and his father approached Mickey and Searches said with a smile, Madam, we are Searches and my father, Zeoticus Gremory. We are grateful for what his son has done for my little sister. Could we visit his home so we can talk about our families? This caused Luffy and Rias to widen their eyes, and Garp said with his big smile, Ahahaha, of course let's go to the house, and there we talk about my grandson and the red-haired brat with rice crackers and a good sake. Luffy was open-mouthed by his grandfather's crazy action, and Searches said with a big laugh, Ahahaha, I really like the old man. Let's go and eat those rice crackers while we talk about the young people. Rias was the same as Luffy now as he glared at his brother for his stupid action. Yes, they both had the same crazy family problem. Chapter 23 two very crazy families. Ahahaha Luffy looks great in his class. That was Garp's shout as he ate rice crackers with a big smile. Everyone was watching the video of Luffy in the class of him that Mickey Haidu took on the visit. Rhea's father and searches were watching the video with a smile, while the black-haired man was in the dining room, covering his face in shame. Ahahaha paying attention to our children's flourishing is the duty of parents, after all, and it is also the duty of grandparents to see their grandchildren be great people like their children, Ria's father said, while he also ate rice crackers with a good sake. After that busy day at school, everyone went to the Haidu mansion to make a talk about the young people of the house more specifically Luffy and Ria's. In this way, they began to watch the videos of the school visit where they could see the life at the academy of both young people and some of the others. The participants were. Mickey Haidu, Grandpa Carp, Rhea's father, and Searches Lucifer. While drinking sake and eating rice crackers, they watched the videos they recorded, while some were in the dining room with Luffy and Rhea's with red faces, while saying, finish quickly, finish quickly, this is hell one I had never seen before. The totally embarrassed Rhea's, with her entire body trembling, was next to a Luffy in the same state, while they both covered their red faces. The others saw them with a drop of sweat and couldn't help but think they are like two drops of water. Look how Rhea Tan is raising her hand and is going to answer the teacher's question, Searches said with great enthusiasm. Ahahaha but it's not as exciting as when Luffy managed to survive a whole week in the forest when he was four years old, Garp said with emotion. Oh, it seems that Luffy Kun was a very energetic child, Rhea's father said with a smile. What if he was energetic? Ha that boy was capable of running through a forest full of many dangers at only 8 years old and came out the next week as if it had been a trip to a garden ha 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 ha, that boy was a ball of energy, Garp said with great emotion. At this, Luffy covered his face completely while some girls had a bright face upon hearing the story. Ha 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 ha, that reminds me of when Rhea Tan entered one of the stores in the underworld and we were looking like crazy for her for a whole day and in the end, she appeared with a beautiful smile while showing us a big stuffed bear as if it had been at the amusement park, Searches said with great emotion. Ha 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 ha, those two brats are like two drops of water Garp said with great joy. I cannot stand it anymore, you're an idiot, brother grandfather Luffy and Rhea shouted furiously. Then, both of them ran into the room in fury and left the others in a drop of sweat. Instantly, Grafia hit her master's head with her paper fan angrily, and Garp laughed at the scene. The Mujuaras could only think that Luffy and Rias were so similar that it was as if Rias was the version of Luffy in this world. In the room, Rias had her face buried in Luffy's chest, who was lying on his bed, while he kept an angry expression on his face. Our families are very crazy, don't you think? Luffy said sarcastically. Rias could only nod into her chest while she continued with her face hidden in shame, and Luffy stroked her beautiful red hair lovingly as he continued saying, It's funny how similar we are even in that. You have an important brother in your world, but something strange bordering on embarrassing, and I have a grandfather of equal importance in my world, who is a total crazy person who puts me to shame with everyone. It's a curious thing, don't you think? May our crazy families get along so well with their craziness. Yeah. It's pretty funny that our crazy families get along so well despite being from different worlds, and I'm happy that happens. And that we are so similar with our very similar families is somewhat ironic. Rhea said as he placed his head sideways on the black-haired man's muscular chest. Luffy smiled at his response, and then Rhea looked at him with a complicated expression as he said, Hey Luffy. Luffy looked at her with interest and asked with interest, Is something wrong, Rhea's? 
The redeed looked away with some nerves and asked with a little fear, Are you happy to have met me? Luffy opened his eyes at that question, and Riaz continued speaking while he rested her chin on his chest with a dreamy look, I'm happy to have met you, Luffy. You have given me new motivation to keep going. Your way of living life infected me by living mine in the same way, and the stories of your adventures have made me want to live similar adventures. Now life without you is impossible for me. I can relate to Nami in that, and I think it's an honor to feel that way. You now have an important place in my heart and in my life. I can't imagine a more exciting life without you. Luffy felt surprised by those words and smiled as he caressed him lovingly and said happily, I'm happy that you feel that way. I'm also happy to have met you. I think that if we both had not met in another life, we would have managed to move forward in our lives based on those we still have by our side. However, we are fortunate to be with each other since having met each other, we have been able to learn a lot about the world of the other and the other person. Thanks to having met each other, we have the opportunity to live adventures together and unite our lives into one to create a wonderful adventure. That's why I'm happy to have come to this world and to be able to meet you, Ria's Gremory. Riaz looked at him with tears at those words and gave him a loving kiss on the lips which he returned with love. After a beautiful kiss, Riaz separated from him to look at him with beautiful eyes full of pure love as she said, Thank you for being in my life, Luffy. Now I'm totally determined I will become a wife worthy of the future Pirate King. I know I can't hold the position of Pirate Queen because that title belongs to Nami, but I'll settle for your second wife. I think that position is ideal for me as your main wife in this world. Therefore, I will strive to be the best wife you can have in this world and who can support you in everything. Luffy was shocked by her words and asked in amazement, Are you really willing to do such a thing for me? Of course in fact, I'm already thinking about the marriage ceremony. A Japanese style one would be good. For reception, somewhere in Japan would be good. If you're talking about a place with a beautiful setting, then Riaz began to say with greater emotion than anyone had ever seen. Luffy looked at her with wide eyes when he saw that she was so similar to Hancock on that topic, but he smiled when he saw that he was happy thinking about it. At that moment, the light turned on and a familiar voice said, Don't start making the wedding preparations without us. They both looked at the entrance of the room to see Nami and Hancock looking at them with a smile, while Laasia was a little angry at Ria's. Nami, Hancock Ria said surprised. Hancock approached her and said, I think a Japanese wedding is a good idea for you. I am planning a more traditional wedding on my island, where my Kuja's warriors will witness my dream come true. After all, everyone can have the wedding they want in their own style. Hancock is right. If I had to choose, I prefer it to be a wedding at the Sunny with all the important people in pirate style. After all, we are both pirates and we deserve a big pirate wedding, with a banquet, party and a lot of fuss. Nami said with emotion. That's a good idea it's a wedding fit for the future pirate kings and you, Asia. How would you like your wedding with Luffy? Rhea said looking at the blonde. Asia could only blush at the question and said shyly, I do not know yet. I don't feel ready to think about those things. The girls just laughed at her response, while Luffy looked at them with a smile, seeing how they were getting along with the wedding topic. However, the silver-haired maid, Grafia, appeared before them with searches and said, All of you, it is still early to talk about that topic. Fufufufu, it's true. It's still early, but not too late, searches said with a smile. Ani-sama, what are you doing here? Riaz asked, looking at him with surprise. The redeed looked at his sister with a very serious face and said, I got a little distracted. There is something I want to talk to you about again, Riaz. It is the continuation of the afternoon talk. Riaz opened her eyes at her words and adopted her one Isama stance as she asked, Then we will do it. Luffy looked between the two curiously and asked, Something happens. Searches just smiled kindly and said, Let's talk about the other bishop. This opened almost everyone's eyes as they were talking about the other bishop of Rhea's team that they kept confined due to their great power. Apparently, they were going to release him so that he could finally join the group. A little while later, at the family's departure, it was a pleasure to have met you. It has been an incredible evening, Rhea's father said with a smile. Ha 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 I'm wondering the same we should meet more often to chat over some good rice crackers, Garp said with great joy. Everyone was at the entrance of the mansion as they bid farewell to Rhea's father and brother with different expressions. Searches looked at Luffy with a smile and said, It was a pleasure meeting your grandfather. He is a very nice person and full of life. I hope you take him to the underworld when you go with Riaz. I don't know if it's the best, Luffy said with a drop of sweat. He and Riaz were watching the farewell with the same thought. Let them get out of here Mickey said goodbye to the Gremory family with an invitation for them to return, which made the two young people nervous, and the father said goodbye to Garp with an invitation for him to go to his territory, which made both of their conditions worse. When both Gremory left with the silver-haired maid, Mickey said to Luffy, You have obtained very good companions. Riaz has a wonderful family and it seems that they love you very much. Also, your grandfather tells many wonderful stories about you. I am happy to be your mother. 
Luffy could only hug her lovingly while she said, I'm wondering the same. I am happy to be your son and to have a mother like you. And so, everyone returned to the mansion to conclude the school visit day. Chapter 24. The Mysterious Bishop. The next day, after school, the Gremory and Mujiwara groups were gathered in front of the sealed room as it was time to free someone very important. The second bishop of the Gremory family. Due to his dangerous ability, he had to confine himself to a special room in the old school building and seal said room tightly at the request of the bishop himself in the underworld. It's the moment. Today we will release our second bishop. Rhea said seriously. But why did they keep him confined? Nami asked, curious about that fact. Well, it's complicated. But he is not so confined since during the day, he lives here and at night, his powers are released while he is in the old building, so he can leave the room. Although he refuses to do so, Rias explained with some sweat. But why doesn't he want to go out? Sanji asked doubtfully. At this question, Rias sighed and said, In modern terms, he is a hikikomori who prefers to remain in confinement to live his life his way. However, the child inside is the one who has accomplished the most demon work among us, Akeno said with a smile as he removed the tape with Kiba. Really? Almost everyone shouted in amazement. And how does he do it? Luffy asked curiously. He achieves it through the computer. He makes special packs with humans that way. Frankly, he is a person who wants to be with us. These types of people negotiate in a different way and make relationships in the same way. They solve things through the computer. Using the computer, even being a new demon, he can get enough numbers like those of higher rank. Akeno explained with a smile. Everyone was surprised by that information, and he knocked on the door to begin expanding his magic circle, and with that, the seal began to release. When the seal was finally released and when the door was removed from all the chains, Rhea slowly opened it. Ooh, could be heard from inside the room. Some were left confused by what they heard, while Rias and Akeno entered the room with a smile. Good morning. It's good to see you with a lot of energy, Rias said sweetly. Why eh? The person inside shouted with clear fear. Ara, Ara, we have removed the seal. Now you are free to leave. Do you want to go out with us? Akeno said with a sweet smile. But the fearful voice spoke with pure denial. Ooh, this place is why and I don't want to go outside, I don't want to see Piaplee. Luffy could only sigh at this really serious case of Ikikomori. He approached a person inside with a kind smile to see a coffin and on top of it, a blonde-haired girl with pointed ears and red eyes. The girl? He asked with some surprise. But someone put a hand on his shoulder and when he looked at his owner, he could see Sanji looking at the girl with an expression of frustration and anger. What's wrong with you, Sanji? He asked worried. The blonde only had tears in his eyes and said with pure pain, Why is the world so cruel? How can they do this to us men who only want to adore the beauty of women? This is a great cruelty of reality. What are you talking about, Sanji Kun? Why are you getting like this for this girl? Nami asked him confused. Sanji just pointed at the blonde person in the coffin and shouted with eyes full of pure suffering. That's a boy, he's just a guy with a girl's look and a girl's clothes. But he shouted almost all the Mujiwaras. They looked at Rias for confirmation, and she could only smile as she said. On the surface, this child looks like a girl, but without a doubt he is a boy. The Mujiwaras looked at the person in the coffin with surprise, and Nami asked Sanji. And how did you find out so easily? Sanji gritted his teeth with tears and said hatefully. I spent two years on an island full of disgusting men who dress like women, and I have developed the ability to identify a man who dresses like a woman. This is horrible how can this boy look like a beautiful girl in this horrible way? Why does he he dress this way? It is an offense against nature. He has a hobby of wearing girls clothes, Akeno said with amusement. But why ee? Sanji shouted furiously. The poor boy could only shudder at the blonde scream and said with fear. Eck, sorry. Pee 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 but, the girl's clothes are super cute. Don't say things like super cute shit you're a boy, you destroyed my dream just by seeing you. He was dreaming about a beautiful blonde girl and the beautiful Asia Chan, the two beautiful blonde bishops return it. Give me back my dream Sanji shouted, looking at the boy with hatred. People's writings and dreams are transcendent, Kaneko said with contempt. The boy looked at everyone with fear and asked, who are they? Rhea smiled lovingly at him and introduced Luffy, Asia and Zenobia saying, they are our new teammates. Monkey D. Luffy, my pawn, Asia Argento, your partner Alpha and Zenobia Corda, my new knight. Luffy, Asia and Zenobia greeted him with a nice to meet you, but the boy said with terror, Eck, the number of members increased a lot. And who are they? Luffy took the lead and said with a big smile, they are my Nakamas. They are Nami, Zoro, Sanji, Yusuf, Robin and Hancock. I hope you can be a great friend to them. The boy only shivered at the presence of all of them, and Rias approached him to say, Please, can we go out, okay? It's a good thing you don't have to stay sealed anymore, right? No, the outside world is impossible for me to see I am scared I'm scared of the outside in any case, even if I go out, I will only cause problems for others the boy shouted in terror. 
Sanji grabbed his arm angrily and said, Hey, the beautiful Riyasama told you to come out and you are going to do it. Ek the boy shouted in panic. At that moment, everything turned white for everyone and the next moment, everyone saw that the boy was not being held down by the blonde cook. What happened? Zoro asked in amazement. Sanji Kun was holding him, that's for sure, Nami said, looking for him everywhere. Something certainly happened, said Zenobia. I felt something in an instant, Asia said surprised. Luffy was impressed by what he had seen with his advanced observation hockey, and the others in the Grimory group sighed at what had happened when the boy's scream could be heard in the room. Don't get angry do not bother yourself please don't hit me. Everyone looked to where the voice came from to see the boy in the corner as he trembled in terror. He used some power that allowed him to stop us and then walk away, Luffy said seriously. This caused everyone to look at him in amazement, and Riaz asked, How did you discover it? I saw it with my advanced observation hockey. I was able to see what he did five seconds before it happened, and when it happened, I confirmed that he had stopped time for five seconds, Luffy explained seriously. The Grimory group was speechless at his words, and Nami asked, but how could he stop time? He possesses a sacred gear that when he is exalted, the time of everything that is in his field of vision can be stopped for a period of time. Akeno explained seriously. This caused the surprise of everyone in Luffy's group, and Robin said, So, Captain Sen was able to see his actions in that time interval, thanks to the advanced observation hockey. It is certainly a dangerous ability if you do not have the proper method to counter it. Because he cannot control it, by orders of the Archduke and the Demon King searches, he was sealed. Akeno explained with some sadness. Everyone could understand that, and Riaz hugged the boy while he said affectionately, This boy is Gaspar Vladi. He is my bishop. He is currently a first-year student of Ku Academy. Also, before being reincarnated, he was half-human and half-vampire. Half-vampire? Almost everyone in Luffy's group shouted. Won't it suck our blood? Yusuf asked with fear. Riaz laughed at that question. Since he is half-vampire, he doesn't need blood as often. If he drinks blood once every 10 days, there is no problem. Although he doesn't like drinking blood, Riaz explained with a smile. I hate bloody -e I hate fish too, also the liver Gasper shouted in terror. Good for nothing vampire, Kaneko said cruelly. Everyone felt sorry for the poor vampire, and then, Luffy asked, So, what kind of sacred gear does that boy possess? Riaz looked at him with a seriousness worthy of a leader and said, The forbidden Baylor view he is a sacred gear in his eye with the ability to stop time. But doesn't stopping time break the rules of the game? Nami asked, realizing that fact. Riaz laughed at that question and pointed at Luffy as he said, Yes, it's true. But, you know. Luffy's doubling of power and the reduction of the White Emperor Dragon are also against the rules. The Mujawaras looked at each other, knowing that Luffy had another thing that broke the rules. The ridiculous power of the Sun God. The problem is that he is not able to control it. Because of that, Gasper was sealed until now. Activating his power without his control was seen as a problem. Riaz explained sadly. This caused pity in the entire Mujawara group, and then, Robin asked with interest, but how could he turn such a powerful boy into his servant? By watching Captain San recruit different characters on his journey, we have come to understand that getting people with such talent is exclusive to a very select few. Riaz nodded understanding his reasoning and said with a smile, I can understand that, and that's why he is a mutated piece. Mutated piece? Everyone asked with interest. Hiba was the one who answered his question. It is different from the usual evil piece. In bodies that clearly need more than one piece to be reincarnated, they can reincarnate with a single piece, and that is a piece that can make such an event occur. Luffy was interested in that information and asked, So, that piece allows you to reincarnate someone who possesses a power beyond the limits of a normal piece. Indeed. The mutated piece allows someone to reincarnate who has a power greater than what a normal piece allows, but still with the condition that they must be part human. Riaz explained with a smile. Luffy nodded at that fact, thinking that he would need that piece in the future, since if he looked into it, he had a green-haired power vessel that he would need to use it on. Usually, among high-class demons, one in ten possess that piece. It is an irregularity created when the evil pieces system was created. It's kind of a bug, but it seems like it was kept as fun. Gaspar Kun is the one who uses Butchu's piece. Kiba said with a smile. The failure that they decided to take is fun. It's as if he found a good trap to obtain good materials in the game of Grand Theft Auto and took advantage of it, Nami said sarcastically. Luffy broke out in a cold sweat and decided not to tell him anything about certain moves in such games. Then, Riaz looked at Akeno and Kiba as he said, Akeno, Yudo, my brother has asked us to see him to talk about the meeting, so we must go soon. Yes, but you, they both said. Are they leaving? Nami asked curiously. Yeah. My brother has asked us to go see him for the meeting we will have. Until he returns, he leaves Gasper to all of you. I know that his great enthusiasm and joy can infect you, Riaz said with a smile. 
Luffy smiled back and said with his typical excitement, leave it in our hands, Ria see you later. Ria smiled fondly at him and left with Akeno and Kiba. When they left, Luffy looked at the vampire and smiled at him as he said, well, now you are another Nakama for us. You will see that you will feel great joy at our side. Asper looked at him with some interest, finding that this boy was someone like his love, and Luffy's smile conveyed something that the son he knew was not able to give him. Trust. That afternoon. Hey, start running. If you are a day walker, then you should be able to run during the day, said a certain blue-haired girl, as he ran with his huge blue sword through the hallways. Keep running a member like you cannot be weak before the person who has done so much for you, show your loyalty to your captain, a certain green-haired man shouted as he ran to the blue-haired girl's side while he held his swords in a threatening manner. Back don't chase me while swinging those dangerous swords a blonde boy shouted in panic as he ran away from them. Everyone watched with a drop of sweat as Zenovia and Zoroch as poor Gasper through the hallways of the old building while swinging their swords dangerously. It looks like a vampire hunt on Zenovia's side, Nami said sadly. And a training session with Zoro, Luffy said calmly. Well, I'm happy to meet another bishop like me, Asia said with teary eyes. Then, they saw how Kaneko was also chasing Gasper while he was holding a garlic in his hands. Diakun, if you eat garlic it will be good for your health, the white-haired girl said in a monotone voice. Ooh, oh Kaneko-chan is bothering me, the poor vampire shouted with more panic. Everyone saw the new persecution with more sweat when someone appeared at the party. Oh, there they are. Everyone turned to see Saji, the student council member arriving at the area. Oh, it's you, Saji, Luffy said with a frown. Hello monkey. I should call you that since it's your real last name. After hearing that there was a Hikikomori servant whose ban was lifted, I came for a while to meet him, Saji said with a smile. Ah, he's over there. He is the one Zenovia, Zoro and Kaneko are chasing, said Luffy, pointing to the chase. Saji looked at the chase and said in panic, hey, hey, Zenovia san is waving his legendary sword. That is okay. Oh wait, he's a girl, huh not to mention she's blonde, but Sanji put his hand on his shoulder and said with tears, sorry, partner, but he is a boy who dresses as a woman. Hearing those words, Saji fell to the ground in great depression and said in pain, this is a fraud. I mean, if he's wearing girls' clothes, it would be to show someone, right? But being a hikikomori, it is a great contradiction. I understand you, friend. It is a cruel mockery of reality. How can they do this to us? Create a boy with a face so cute that he looks like a beautiful young blonde girl who wears girls' clothes and acts like a girl. The world is very unfair Sanji shouted in pain. You are right brother you're right justice for the worshippers of true feminine beauty, Saji shouted loudly. Justice they both shouted with determination. Everyone had a drop of sweat from that stupid scene, but they felt someone approaching, and then, they heard a voice that Luffy recognized instantly, ha. Hey. The servants of the Demon King's family are playing around here. When they saw who it was, they could see a man in a yukata who looked like a bad guy and smiled at them with amusement. Azazel Luffy shouted furiously. This caused the others to become alert, and Nami asked, he is the governor of the fallen angels. It doesn't seem so important. Azazel just laughed at the orange-haired girl's words and said to Luffy with a smile, hey red dragon. It's been a while since that night. Instantly, Zenovia and Zoro prepared their swords, Sanji got into position, Nami manipulated the skies to have lightning ready, Yusup only stood by Gasper's side with trembling, Robin prepared her book to attack, and Hancock prepared her fruit for battle. Dot. Monkey, do you mean he's Saji asked with wide eyes. Luffy just nodded and stayed in front of Asia to protect her. Azazel looked at them all with that amused smile and said, I don't feel like fighting. Relax his posture. They must know that even if many gather, they won't be able to beat me, right? Even I don't intend to bother low-class demons and individuals with such latent talent in this place. Since I was taking a walk, I came to visit the place where the demons are. As the wielder of the holy demon sword. I came to see him. Luffy looked at him with dangerous eyes and said, if you're coming for Kiba, then he's not here and even then, I won't allow it. Azazel's smile increased and he said ironically, oh really? If they couldn't beat Kakabiel, then there's no way they can beat me. I see, the holy demonic sword wielder is missing. This is boring. Then, he approached Gasper and said, the vampire that hides out there. You are the holder of the forbidden valor view. If you can't use it properly, then it will become something that causes losses to others. As a support type sacred gear, if you can supplement the lacking aspects, it should be fine, but now that he mentioned it, the demon's research on sacred gears hasn't advanced much. If you invoke it with your five senses and if the owner's capacity is not sufficient, then it will naturally get out of control and be extremely dangerous. Then, he looked at Saji and said, is that the absorption line? If you are practicing, try using it. Connect her to this vampire. If he summons his sacred gear while you absorb the excess energy, his sacred gear probably won't get out of control so easily. 
Saji opened her eyes at his words and said in amazement, and my sacred gear sucked the power of the opponent's sacred gear. I thought it simply absorbed the opponent's power and weakened them. Azazel just laughed at his words and said, that shows how little they know about sacred gears. They possess abilities that go beyond the limits they know. With what I just told you, you can connect the sacred gear of the Sekiruite on one side and the vampire on the other. Think about what they can achieve with that. If you increase the number of lines, you will have many possibilities. Everyone was speechless at Azazel's words, and Robin said with a little fear, the ability to find all the possibilities of the sacred gears just by seeing them. Someone with that ability can be a great danger to everyone. Azazel looked at her with a smile and said with amusement, or, the greatest support they can get. Then he looked at Luffy and said, I apologize for Vali. He is a somewhat impulsive boy who is guided by his desire for battle. I guess the fact that you are his predestined rival fills him with emotion. Well, I'm leaving. It was a pleasure meeting you all. I hope to see you at the meeting and I hope to learn everything about you, Mujiwaras. But that, he disappeared as he left the entire group with an uncomfortable feeling for having seen such a character. Chapter 25. Meeting another peculiar character. Some days after, Luffy was heading towards a shrine on top of a hill. He didn't know who was waiting for him up there and what they wanted with him, but Akeno told him that he should go to meet someone who wanted to see him. Upon reaching the top, he could see the figure of Akeno in her priestess attire waiting for him at the entrance. Welcome, Luffy Kun, she said with a seductive smile. Luffy kissed her on the lips and then asked her, what are you doing here? Akeno smiled and they both began to climb the shrine to enter. Sorry for asking you to come, Luffy Kun. But Ria's had to have one last meeting with Search's Sama about the conference matters and how Grafia Sama will be with them, she won't need me. I have asked you to come because someone is waiting for both of us at the sanctuary. It is safe to enter since the sanctuary made a secret agreement and demons can enter. Luffy looked at the shrine with interest and asked Akeno, do you live here? Akeno smiled seductively and said, yeah. The priestess of the old generation passed away and Ria secured this shrine for me. As they passed the entrance, they both could hear a voice full of serenity that said, this is the Sekiruite. They both saw a man with golden hair and twelve wings that glowed behind him descend. Luffy looked at him in amazement at the power she felt from him, and Akeno said with a charming smile, meet you Michael Sama, the leader of the angel faction. The archangel and current leader of heaven, Michael, looked at Luffy with a kind smile and said, nice to meet you, monkey D. Luffy Kun. Later, the three of them were inside the shrine while drinking some tea that Akeno made, and Michael looked at Luffy with interest. I'm curious about you. One of the warriors of my faction has told me a lot about you and assured me that you could give peace to the world. Besides, she she told me that you and your friends come from another world, he said with a curious voice. Luffy smiled and said with some nerves, I prefer to let the person in charge of us explain it to you in the meeting. He will understand that he will act as leader of our faction and he is responsible for the explanations. Michael looked at him with a smile and said, well, I will be delighted to meet your leader at the meeting and I hope to hear good things from you. Now, let's proceed to what I have requested of you. Luffy Kun, the truth is that I thought about giving this to you. Michael made a movement with his hand and made a sword appear that emanated great sacred power. This was George if I mentioned Saint George to you, then it would be easier for you to understand. It is the sacred dragon killing sword, Ascalon, he said with a kind smile. Luffy looked at the sword in front of him in amazement and Drake said seriously, he is a famous dragon slayer. Well, you should study a little more, did I ask you? And that he is a dragon slayer? Luffy asked with some annoyance. A group of people who made dragon slaying their profession and it is also a term used for the weapons they used. Drake said more seriously. Sounds like pirate hunters in my world. But I don't understand why they give me a sword like this. Luffy said doubtfully. Why does he give me this sword? He asked Michael seriously. It is a special courtesy, since I am giving you this, even if you, who are a demon who possesses the power of a dragon, will be able to use it. But before you do, do you think you could assimilate it into the boosted gear? Michael said, still with that kind smile. Luffy looked at the sword with a doubtful expression, since he wasn't much of a sword person. In his world he sucked at the sword, but here he had practiced kendo for a while and had improved. Still, the sword wasn't so much his thing, and he preferred fists. It depends on you. Boosted gear responds to your feelings. If you want it, it should be possible. Furthermore, you can use the power of the sword however you want with the boosted gear even in your fists. Drake said. Luffy looked at Michael with that look worthy of a captain and asked him again, but because I? Michael looks at him with a kind smile and said kindly, in this meeting, I think there is a great possibility that the three factions will cooperate. I heard that you already know this, so I'll say it, but we lost our creator, God, during the war. Our enemies also lost the former demon kings. The leaders of the fallen angels are secretive. Azazel also made his official stance of not wanting to create any more wars. This is a great opportunity. A chance to get rid of unnecessary fights. 
If the small-scale battles continue intermittently, then somehow, the three factions will be destroyed. Even if that's not the case. I'm going to stop him right there I must tell you something from my own experience. No matter the peace there is in the world, the union that can be created between different forces in pursuit of a better world, there will always be conflict and war, and this is being told by someone who has seen it firsthand in my world. Even though the world walks a line of peace where everyone lives peacefully in the darkness of the world, there is always a war that harms others. Leaders may not want a war and want peace, but there will always be people who do not want the same and will provoke conflict sooner or later. I'm serious. If you really want peace in this world, you need to be prepared to face those who don't want it, Luffy said, interrupting him with a look worthy of a great leader. Michael looked at him with wide eyes, finding in this boy a will that he had only seen in his father, and he couldn't help but see his silhouette behind Luffy. He smiled in a friendly manner and said, whoever the god of your world is he must be proud to have a creation like you. I thank you for your words and I will take them into account. So, what I am saying is that this sword is given to you because we trust you to support us in any conflict. Luffy looked at the sword with serious eyes and asked with some doubts, is it really okay to give it to me? Why me? Michael was still smiling at him and said, the three factions support you on your journey and we wanted to give you something to support you. Accepted. We have made some modifications so you can use it. Luffy was not very convinced about this, but Drake told him, partner, focus your consciousness on the boosted gear. I'll help you after that. Try to make the sword in your hand combine with the flow of the holy sword. He grabbed the sword with his dragon gauntlet clad hand and instantly, the holy sword glowed with an intense aura. After a flash of red, Luffy saw a new gauntlet on his left hand with a leaf growing out of the top. They actually combined, Luffy said in amazement. He moved it with interest, discovering that he could use it as a combat weapon with fists like he always did and said with a big smile, incredible it's a sword I feel good about I already want to show it to Zoro, so he can see that I also have a sword. After receiving Ascalon, Michael tells Luffy, well, I have to go now. I'll see you at the meeting and I hope to learn more about you and your otherworldly friends. See you. After saying that, Michael's entire body was enveloped in a bright light and after a flash, the leader of the angels had disappeared. Later, Akeno served Luffy more tea after Michael left, and the brunette asked Akeno a question. Akeno, what was that fallen angel mentioned about you in battle? She looked at him with a gloomy expression and said, It is a very unpleasant story, and I would not like to relive it. But when it comes to you, I'll tell you. With that, she lowered her priestess kimono and revealed two wings. One of a demon and one of a fallen angel. Akeno, you Luffy said surprised. Akeno only showed a face full of sadness and bitterness as he said, these are dirty feathers the wing of a demon and that of a fallen angel I have both. He then proceeded to tell how he met Rias after losing his mother and how he ended up hating his father for abandoning them. How do you feel, Luffy? You must hate the fallen angels for what they did to you and Asia. Even for trying to destroy the city. I'm sure there's no way you think well of them, Akeno said very sadly. Luffy looked at her with serious eyes, finding a great similarity between her and Nami, since they both hate a specific faction and said seriously, I hate fallen angels. Akendo began to shed some tears, but Luffy continued with powerful eyes, but I don't hate you. The black-haired woman looked at him surprised and he continued, it is a mistake to hate an entire group for what a single person did. Nami was just like you. She lost her mother because of some fishmen pirates, and she spent 10 years of her life as a slave to them and hating all the pirates for that. When she met me, she also hated me for being a pirate, but as she got to know me better, she discovered that I was not like those who killed her mother. She trusted me, and when she defeated the pirate who had made her life impossible, she finally understood that not all pirates were bad. Likewise, she also doesn't hate all the fishmen for what that damn thing did, because she's very good friends with them now. You see it. I don't have to hate you because you are a fallen angel, because I know how special you are, and that is important to me. The candle looked at him with tears at those words and said with a smile full of happiness, you say some shocking words. After hearing that how could I not fall in love with you? And then, she threw herself into Luffy's arms to hug him lovingly as he said, I already decided. I already made up my mind, Luffy. I want to be one of your women. Luffy looked at her in amazement at these words and said, are you sure? The Kendo nodded and said, I know I can't take the position of legal wife because that is occupied by Nami. I can't take the second wife's either because that one is occupied by Rias so she could go for third place. Luffy opened his eyes at these words and asked, but is a position so important? For me they are all equally important and there is no one above the other. The Kendall laughed amused at those words and said, that's nice of you, but positions are important in this type of relationship. The first position is the one occupied by the family leader together with her husband. The second position is occupied by the woman who supports both in the family and the third position well, that is exclusive to the woman who entertains her husband in an exotic way. Then, Akeno looked at Luffy with a very sweet smile and said, Luffy, would you like me to pamper you a little? 
Luffy looked at her with a smile and proceeded to lay her head on the girl's lap. The black-haired woman smiled even more and began to caress her lover's hair, while he himself enjoyed the beautiful woman's caresses. Fufufu, I'm stealing one of Ria's and Nami's privileges. Somehow I feel like I'm doing something wrong. If they saw this Akeno said with a seductive smile. What's wrong with us, huh? Said two voices at the entrance. Akeno and Luffy looked at the entrance to see Ria's and Nami who looked somewhat angry and with a malicious smile, Akeno said. Ara, I think they have discovered us. Ria's only remained calm at her words, but Nami approached them while Akeno looked at her with an evil smile and said with lightning coming out of her, there is no excuse or forgiveness. Using someone else's lap without our permission. Then, she began to pull Luffy's cheeks forcefully as he suffered in agony. Ria's just asked Luffy, and Michael. He's already gone, Luffy responded with pain. And the sword. Ria's asked calmly. I already have it, Luffy responded with even more pain. Then you no longer have anything to do here. Let's go Nami said with authority. She let go of Luffy's cheek and just like that, both family leaders left with Luffy following them, while Akeno laughed amused and said, I'm really jealous of the first and the second. At this, Nami and Ria's only turned to give Akeno a very dangerous look and then continued on their way home. Chapter 26. The Meeting. On the night of the meeting, the entire CIO and the Mujiwara group were in the club room led by Ria's and Luffy, since it was the day of the meeting of the three great factions. The school had already been covered by a barrier so no one could enter, and outside it angels, fallen angels and demons surrounded it in a protective manner. Okay, let's go to the meeting. Gasper, Kaneko, I need you to stay here to protect this building. Who knows what could happen, said Ria's, looking at his two youngest servants. Everyone saw a cardboard box with holes shaking in fear in the corner of the room, and Nami said, not who is more scared. Yusup or Gasper Kun. Hey I'm not afraid just cautious with his life. Yusup said offended. Everyone laughed at this and just like that, everyone went to the meeting. Later, the door to the living room was knocked, and Ria's and Luffy entered with their groups in their noble mode. Excuse me, I'm sorry we arrived late, she said, looking at everyone present. At the large table were Ria's brother with Seraphil on the demon side with Grafia and Sona's entourage behind him, Michael was with Arena behind him, and Azazel was sitting with a big smile with Bali behind him. With a calm expression. Luffy noticed that the person he wanted to see was not yet there and asked, hasn't he arrived? The three leaders looked at him curiously, and Michael asked, I guess he's the one you told us about, right? That's how it is. D is the person in charge of us, and he said that he would be in this meeting with his guardian. Luffy responded seriously. Everyone looked at him amazed by that information, and Riaz stood behind his brother to show his place in that meeting. Well, I guess we can't start the meeting without that person being here, right? Azazel asked with an amused smile. Indeed. In this meeting there are people from whom we need an explanation, and we must wait for it to begin. Michael said seriously. Well, if he is a person who brought Luffy Kun to our world, he sure is someone interesting. Maybe he'll arrive soon, Searches said with a smile. And as if he had been summoned, a red door appeared in front of everyone, and D entered accompanied by Garp as his bodyguard. We're sorry we were late, but a black cat crossed our path, and we had to take the path of life, D said with a funny smile. Everyone looked at him with a drop of sweat, and Nami said, that is the most pathetic excuse I have ever heard. Well, at least I bring some fun to life, and I don't feel bitter all the time, D said with an arrogant smile. Some looked at him with a drop of sweat at his words, and Azazel said, so, you are in charge of these kids. As we have heard, they have come for you. He smiled happily and said as he sat on a chair that was brought to him, indeed. My name is D, and I am the creative deity of the world of these young people. The leaders widened their eyes at this revelation, and Michael asked curiously, so, you are a deity of our father's level. Do they talk about the deceased god of the Bible? The truth is, the rules of the creator gods are that they are the most powerful in their creations. In other words, if you were in my world, you would be easily defeated by being in my creation, since it is my terrain and my power increases in it. However, being here, I am as powerful as a high-class god and could face beings like you, but with a little more difficulty. And if the god of the Bible were alive, then he could easily defeat me in this world. D explained with a smile. Everyone was amazed by such information, and Azazel said, well, that makes a lot of logic in different worlds. So, could you tell us about his world and about these young people? He looked at them all with some nervousness and said, scratching the back of his neck, Wow, it's somewhat ironic to tell people like you about my creation, but I will do it. Where do I begin? Well, I can start by saying that the creation of my world was something similar to what your god did. The first thing I did was create the sun and the moon, which are the symbols of my people in my world. The next thing I created was the great ocean, which would take on great importance in my world throughout its history. After that, I created two major lines that would divide the ocean into six major seas the red line and the calm belt. From this were born the four seas of the world. 
the north blue, the south blue, the west blue and the east blue. And in the end there would be a huge sea in a straight line that would be surrounded by the red line and the four seas. The grand line, from which the two seas that compose it would be born. Paradise and the new world. Everyone was impressed by such a wonderful story of the creation of a world, and the leaders were taking note of every word to tell it in their faction. Then, I began to create the different islands that would make up all the seas. I must say that the exact number of the islands is not so exact because I think of a new island and put it in. And believe me, no one realizes this because there are more than 20,000 islands in the world, and one more goes unnoticed by all the beings of my creation. But there is one thing that is exact. The first island I created was the one that everyone in my world calls Laugh Tale, the island everyone most wanted D continued with a big smile. Laugh Tale? Searches asked interested. It is the island where One Piece is located for a pirate to become the Pirate King, he must navigate the entire Grand Line and must find the One Piece on that island, that's why it's so important in my world, Luffy said with emotion. He laughed heartily at his words and said, and that importance is well deserved I'll explain why soon. So, with my work almost done since I had created the vegetation both in the sea and on the islands, I began to create the creatures that would live there. The first thing I did was create all the animals that would live in the sky, sea and land. It was easy since it is a more or less the same creation in each world. Birds, fish, land animals. The only thing is that each creator god has the freedom to put unique variety in his world, and I prefer large animals for all areas. I created the sea kings as a priority, some exotic animals on land and water, huge animals that exceed the normal ones in size, and then I went for the normal ones too. Well, you exaggerated a little in the creation of the animals. Seriously, who thinks of creating fish so big that they can even eat an entire island? Yusuf said with fear. He looked at him with blank eyes, and while he pointed at himself, he said calmly, E. Well, you're horrible, Yusuf shouted angrily. He laughed amused and then continued with his account of his creation. Well, after the animals would come the thinking creatures although some sea kings can think like humans. Well, the first ones he created were the winged beings and with those, some he sent to the moon and one species he left on the red line. These were the Shandia, the Birkin, the Skypians and the Lenarian. Those were the first thinking beings and because he created them for the heavens, he modified some clouds so that they could form their civilization in the sky. Although the Lenarian and the Shandia in the end preferred the earth to the sky. In that way, they are more similar to the angels and fallen angels of this world. Michael and Azazel were interested in these beings similar to them, and D continued with his story. After that, create the Oni. I thought they would be convenient as they would be a good counterpart to the winged beings. When creating the Oni, he then created the fishmen, who would live in the sea as beings that could breathe underwater. He already had the three most powerful beings of the sky, sea and earth, so he could create the others. He believes in different races such as the Longneck, the Mink, the Tontata and even the Giants. With all the special species created, only the most important one was missing. The human. However, I wanted to do something special. What? Michael asked with great curiosity. Take a drop of sunshine and combine it with the dust of the earth. From that combination the first man was born, whom I called Nika. So, to create the woman who will accompany the man, take a drop of moonlight as a counterpart to the sun and combine it with a rib of the man. In this way, the first woman was born, which I called Selene. And so, seeing that all my creation was well done, I left everything alone. And so the story of my world began. D concluded with a smile. The leaders were speechless at such a wonderful creation story, and Azazel asked, but I suppose there is also evil in your creation, right? D showed a sad face and said, unfortunately yes. Nika and Selene gave birth to the humanity that today makes up my world, but evil also entered my creation. Evil is a plague that spreads to all worlds seeking to spread like a plague, and none of the worlds is safe from it. For this reason, it has influenced my world based on desires. You see, Mother Ocean, the entity that governs the seas as protector of each sea in my world, was hated by an ancient demon that craved all the dominion she possessed. For this reason, that demon began to grant humanity's wishes in the form of fruits so that he would have more influence in the world. But Mother Ocean did not see this kindly, and she cursed the wishes transformed into fruits as they became her weakness. For this reason, an Akuma no Mi user is weak in sea water and sinks, since Mother Ocean makes him weak to eliminate that wish granted by that demon. Wait a moment if it says that Nika was the first human to exist in our world, how come her name appears in Luffy's Akuma no Mi? Asked Nami interested. He looked at her with a smile and said, that's because of me. How Nika and Selene were part of my creation, I took their souls and kept them safe from any threat. However, I decided to do something peculiar. I consulted with Mother Ocean about transforming Nika and Selene's souls into Akuma no Mi that could amplify the power of the drops they carried, and she granted it to me, but on the condition that they would also be affected by the curse. 
In this way, I managed to get hold of the demon and asked him to turn the two souls into Akuma no Mi. He gave me a condition to do such a thing, and upon knowing what it was, I decided to agree. What did he ask for? As Azala asked interested. That transformed him into an Akuma no Mi too. He granted me his gift of transforming wishes into Akuma no Mi, and he asked me to transform it into one that was on the level of Nika and Selene's. And thus, the Akuma no Mi divine were created. Nika, the god of the sun, Selene, the goddess of the moon, and Diabolus, the god of dark desires. Each one can surpass the other, and I think you already know who has the third one. D said looking at the Mujawaras. Imurabin said realizing it. All the Mujawaras were speechless at that piece of information, and Michael asked, who is Imu? He sighed and proceeded to tell one more part of the story of his world. You see, on the island of Laftail there was an ancient kingdom that was ruled by a group of special people called the D-Clan. They were a group of people who were Nakamas of someone they called Joy Boy, and that person was the user of Nika fruit at that time. Joy Boy had such close Nakamas that he decided to create a clan with all of them, and they did a ritual in which they placed a letter in his name. D. In this way, the different families of the clan were born, possessing great power that would pass through of generations through the history of the world. Impressive, Seraphal said with great emotion. However, evil came to that time in the form of an individual who wanted to dominate everything. Narona Imu. That person acted in the shadows so that twenty kingdoms attacked the ancient kingdom and destroyed all vestiges of Joy Boy and his legacy. At the same time, they chased each member of the D clan, since Imu saw them as the greatest danger to him, and today there are only a few. Imu destroyed Joy Boy and thus created his own genesis, a new creation wanting to rise as god of the world. And so we arrive at today with a world controlled in the shadows by a lost sheep who desires everything I have created. D term with a sigh. Everyone was shocked by such a story and Michael said with a smile, well, we are happy to have a great eminence like you with us. But tell us, why did you bring Luffy Khan and his people here? He scratched the back of his neck and said, ha, let's say it was for fun. Luffy had died in that war and he didn't want it to end like this. So I sent him as a child to another world and this was the closest I saw. And he brought his Nakamas and more people so that he wouldn't feel alone. I'm really sorry if this makes you uncomfortable. The three leaders just laughed a little as Michael said, come on, he doesn't feel so guilty. He's not that bad and in fact, we're having fun with this. We learn from beings from another world and we have the opportunity to talk with you. Stay calm and leave Luffy Kun with his Nakamas here if you want. We only ask that you cooperate with us since Luffy Kun is now linked to us as well. I have the same opinion. Yugi Kun is now by my sister's side and she would feel very sad if he leaves. Therefore, we agree that he and all of his companions remain here. Searches said with a smile. Well, I am interested in that world and what it can offer us. If they can give us good research information, there is no problem for me. Azizel said with a smile. He smiled at his words and said happily, excellent in that case they will remain here and be under my guardianship, I will continue to bring more people from my world to support them, and I will give my champions dawn gears so they can be stronger. The three leaders smiled at this statement and Luffy was relieved that everything was on track. Then, Azizel began to speak, well, now that all the called leaders are present, let's begin this meeting. The first thing we must put on the table is Kakabiel's actions in this new life. Yes, his actions went very far. His actions could have caused a war between us, Michael said seriously. I agree and I trust that our good friend Azazel has taken care of Kakabiel properly, said Searches, looking at the governor with pure seriousness. Who do they take me for? I may be very laid back and someone who doesn't take things too seriously, but I know I have to do things when they need to be done. I sent him to Casido, and now he will stay there for a long eternity, Azazel said, somewhat offended. Thus, the meeting continued as they talked about some important matters until they reached the most important topic in which Azazel said, in that case, I suggest that we form an alliance between the factions to be able to fight against the threats that are presented to us. The other leaders nodded at his words and Michael said, I agree. With the threats that are ahead, the leaders of the other factions must be united to face it. Searches cited his words and said, I think the same. Our worlds must be alert to any threat. Thanks to Mugi Khan and D-San, we can be more prepared and protect our factions. He smiled at his words and said, in that case, the alliance will be made in pursuit of the protection of peace in our factions. I suggest that the other factions be notified of the alliance and that they meet with us as soon as possible. You're right, D-San. Okay, I will prepare everything for the leaders to meet in the underworld. Searches said with a big smile. In that case, I will announce to my angels of the alliance. I guess them will be interested in you, Luffy Kun. Same with you, D-San. Michael said with an amused smile. In that case, I will prepare my fallen angels for the meeting. I suppose Barakwil and Shimhaza will be very interested in this, Azazel said with amusement. Everyone was happy that the meeting reached a great agreement, but an event occurred that made them cautious. 
They had a strange feeling that Luffy and Nami remembered and observed that some of their Nakama were paralyzed in time, except Luffy, Nami, Zoro, Yamato, Hancock and Robin. The leaders looked out the window of the room to see how the sky became dark, and at the same time, some symbols appeared in it. We have problems. They have invaded this area, Grafia said furiously. Who are they? Nami asked worried. Azazel just looked at the symbol coldly and said a name that everyone would remember from that day on. The Cow's Brigade. Chapter 27. Attack on the meeting. Everyone looked outside the building to see how there were several magicians attacking the place. We are under fire. They have started their movement in this area, Azazel said seriously. Yes, but what's going on here? Why can only we move? Nami asked with concern. Luffy looked at those who could still move and could to do something. I guess how Gasper stopped time, the entire area is under the effect of him. However, the fact that some of us can move is because we possess a power capable of protecting us from their ability. It seems that in the case of our group. Zoro, Hancock, Yamato, my grandfather, you and I, we can move because our king's hockey protects us. In Robin's case, she possesses the dawn gear that D gave her, and therefore she has protection. Oh, that makes sense Nami said with a smile. But then, Riaz looked at the old building with fear and said, They are attacking the club building, and Kaneko and Gaspar are there. Luffy looked at the building and could sense several people with his observation hockey. I can sense some people with bad intentions in the building next to Gaspar and Kaneko. Riaz froze at this information and said to her brother, as her red aura was released by her fury. Ani sama I'll go save my precious servants with Luffy, I won't let anyone hurt you we can use that system, since the remaining piece of the tower is in the building. Searches smiled at his little sister's determination and said, In that case, it would be better for you to use the exchange system. Grafia, prepare everything to send them. Yes, searches Sama, she said, nodding. Exchange system? Nami asked confused. This is a system in which the king is exchanged for the rook piece in a game. It can only be used once in each game, and it is a special rule even in chess. Riaz explained seriously. Everyone understood this, especially Robin who has played a lot of chess, and then, Luffy looked at her mobile Nakamas to say, Protect everyone here while Riaz and I save our Nakamas. Yes, Captain said Nami, Zoro, Robin, Hancock and Yamato at the same time. Azazel looked at Bali and said, Bali, go and take care of the hassles outside. I'm sure they won't be a problem for you. Bali smiled and taking out his silver wings, said, Of course. After all they are just insects before my confrontation with my true rival. Luffy just frowned at him, and Vali launched himself at the mages with his balance breaker to completely pulverize them. Grafia had finished the preparations just when a voice was heard in the room. Wow, I didn't expect to see the leaders so friendly. Searches became cautious and shouted at Grafia. Do it now. Grafia nodded and instantly, both of them were enveloped by the transfer light. Meanwhile, a magic circle was shown before everyone and Searches said, It seems that Leviathan's last annoyance has appeared. From the circle, a beautiful woman appeared and looked at them all with malice. How are you, current Demon King searches? The named one just looked at her with a smile and said, Oh very well. It's a pleasure to see the descendant of Leviathan's bloodline, Kitlea Leviathan. May I know your reason for this visit? The beautiful woman just gave an evil smile and said, The members of the ancient Demon King's faction, almost all of them, have decided to cooperate with the Cow's Brigade. This left everyone cautious, while the Mujawaras were confused as to what was happening, which she saw with mockery, and began to laugh maliciously. Don't make that face. After all they won't have a chance, she said as she showed a symbol in her hand. At this, Azazel destroyed the window, and with that, everyone left the building just as an explosion covered the entire place. When they were outside, they could see the same woman in the sky looking at them still with malice. Oh, it looks like they managed to escape. But it is a useless effort since with my new power they have no chance. She said, showing the symbol in her hand again. At this, a certain person looked at her with neutral eyes and said, That snake is not stable. If you don't use it wisely, it can cost you very expensive. But Leia looked at him curiously and asked, And who are you? Nothing can surpass the snake of office. How do you know about her? He just smiled at her words and said, Oh, because I am someone who knows about those topics. I am a new face in the alliance. D, the god of the D. Hearing this, could Leia turn pale, and at that moment, Azazel had launched himself at her with a spear of light. She managed to narrowly avoid him, and the leader of the fallen angels looked at her with great amusement as she said, I hope you can entertain me while the young people take care of this invasion. Meanwhile in the old school building, Luffy and Riaz appeared before Gaspar and Kaneko, who were having a problem with some headed female magicians who were releasing an evil aura. Luffy-senpai Gaspar shouted when he saw him. 
At this shout, the magicians turned to see the black-haired man with an expression full of hatred and said, It's the Seker Yuite and the Crimson Princess. Luffy looked at them with a frown, and while he was planning how to take the two cowhays away from him, he said to buy time. Release my Nakamas right now or I swear I'll kick your asses. The magicians looked at him with a dangerous look, but then, Gasper began to say with tears, But you, it's better that I die. Please, but you, senpai. Please kill me because of these eyes, I can't make friends with anyone. I am nothing more than a nuisance and a coward. This opened Ria's and Luffy's eyes, and then Ria said kindly, Don't say something so stupid. I will not abandon you. When you transferred to my family, you became my belonging. That, now you have been born again, you are going to live for me, and you are also going to find a new way of life with which you can live satisfactorily. Luffy looked at her with a smile when he saw that they were very similar in that way of fighting for their precious beings, although Ria's treated them more like his precious servants. Gasper looked at her with more tears and said, I couldn't find it. I only cause problems my life has no value. You are my servant and member of my family. I'm not going to abandon you so easily. Now the day has come when you can be free Arias told him with total seriousness. Luffy nodded at the Redeed's words and said to Gasper in his captain's tone, Arias is right, Gasper it doesn't matter what other people think or what happened to you, now you only have to care about your new family, your new Nakamas, you must look forward and search for your own dream. Gasper looked at them with tears at those words of support, but a mage hit him in the face with fury and grabbed his hair while she said, You guys are so stupid. It's silly the way you treat a half-vampire who is dangerous by simple nature. It is just as the ancient Demon King's faction says. Those of the Grimmery family are as foolish as they are deeply affectionate and full of power. Then she looked at Ria's and Luffy with contempt as he said, Maybe this half-vampire would have gotten more courage if you had brainwashed him quickly and used him as a more effective tool. If you had let his sacred gear get out of control, while throwing this boy into fallen angel territory, you could have eliminated one of his leaders. Why didn't you do that? Could it be that you intend to treat a servant as your closest friend? Am Luffy shouted, trying to hit her. However, Rhea stopped him with her hand, and when he looked at her, he could see how he looked at the mage with great calm and said with a pride beyond what he had known, I treasure my servant. Luffy opened his eyes enormously at her words, finding the answer to the question he had asked himself about her, since he knew everything about her. Why was she happy to have servants a little similar to the ones he saw in the house? Her world. The answer was very simple, an answer that made her more beautiful in her eyes. They are her treasure he felt bad thinking that she was a bit similar to the Tenuyubidos because she wasn't. She made them her servants, but she loved them as if they were her greatest treasure. She gave them everything possible so that they could have a better life and be happy. The Tenuabitos would never do something like that because they see others as simple insects that are beneath them. Ria's was not like them, no she was a young mistress who loved her servants with all her heart like a treasure. At that moment, he saw how the mage had shot a magic bullet at Ria's, destroying her clothes, and said, What a shameless mouth you have also, I don't like you because you are beautiful even though you are a demon, daughter of Gremory. Ria's only remained calm at the attack on her person, and Luffy took her hat, her most precious treasure, and put it on his head while he said, I'm tired of these stupid magicians who don't appreciate someone else's treasure I'm going to finish this. Then he looked at Gasper and said with his eye shadowed by his hat, Gasper, it's time for you to make a decision are you going to continue avoiding the help that Ria's offers you, or are you going to be grateful for everything she has done for you by fighting for her dream? Rias has done a lot for you by taking you in when no one helped you and offering you a new life, the least you can do is become stronger so that I can support her in her dream and in her life, that's what my Nakamas have done for me since I picked them up and since I saved them from her past, get up, Gasper, and show why Rias Gremory was not wrong to welcome you into her family, Luffy Senpai were Gasper's words upon hearing Luffy's words, Rias looked at Luffy with tears as he thought, thank you Luffy. Now I can understand why your Nakama follow you with as much loyalty as their captain. Luffy pulled the edge of his new sword, Ascalon, from his gauntlet and cut his hand so the blood would drain from it. The female magicians looked at this cautiously, and Ria's also observed this with wide eyes. Luffy just looked at Gasper with a smile and said, If you need our help to become stronger, just ask we are Nakamas and as Nakamas we support each other, that's why I will give you my support, so you can show what you're worth. With that, he extended his sword towards Gasper, and before the magicians could do anything, the blood that was on the blade flew towards the vampire's face. Drink my blood, which houses not only the power of the Red Dragon Emperor, but also the power of a D like me show everyone who Gasper is, Rhea's Grimmery's Bishop Luffy shouted furiously. Gasper looked at him with pure admiration and nodded to his words while he took the black-haired man's blood from his cheek. The instant Gasper swallowed his blood, the atmosphere inside the hall suddenly changed. Everyone felt a mysterious chill all over his body, and when Luffy looked at Gasper, he didn't find him there. When he and all the magicians looked for it, they heard a mysterious flapping of wings, and upon looking more closely, they could see several bats flying in the area. 
So that damn vampire was transformed said one of the magicians. Bastard shouted another. They tried to shoot him with his magic bullets, but were knocked down by something that made them lose their balance. Looking at the origin, they could see several black hands from the shadows of the female mages. It's like Robin's ability, Luffy said impressed. So this is the ability of a vampire a mage shouted angrily. Take this shouted another, pointing her hand at the shadows. The magicians fired magic bullets into the shadows, but the hands only dispersed upon contact. Then, the bats arranged themselves around the magicians, and small bites could be seen on their necks. Do you intend to suck our blood? A mage shouted cautiously. No, our magic power is also being absorbed shouted another in panic. Luffy watched this in amazement when Rhea said with a smile, Luffy, this is a part of Gasper's power, which was originally hidden. He should have been set free for drinking your blood. Luffy could only smile knowing that he had managed to lift Gasper, and then, the magicians pointed at them with fury. They fired multiple bullets at him, but they stopped in the air as if paralyzed. It's useless. Everyone heard a dark voice in the air, and Luffy recognized it instantly. Gasper he said with joy. Instantly, the magicians were stopped in place, and Gasper's voice said with emotion. I'm stopping them with my ability Luffy senpai, the final blow. Luffy nodded and then, he launched himself at them to hit them with his fist covered in hockey, and when Gasper returned time, they fell to the ground completely defeated. Well done, Gasper Luffy said with a big smile and a thumbs up. Yes, Luffy senpai Gasper's voice said happily. Rias managed to untie Kaneko and looked at Luffy with a loving smile while he thought. The ability to motivate those most affected with just your presence. He is able to lift up anyone he has suffered in his life, and he manages to win his heart by lifting her up. That is the innate quality of a true king, and it is something that I like so much about him. Let me know in the comments below if you guys want the next part. Also check out my other video that has been shown and left. Thank you for watching, if you enjoyed this video please like and share this video. And have a fantastic day bye.